Play of games. They lined up and kicked the field goals 3 3 in the 13. What do you mean nine years ago? I mean, I'll give you an update right here. Notre Dame, Florida <laughs> State. Here's the weather update. The past 10 years, games played at South Bend around the weekend of November the 13th. Guess. Snow only once on the ground last year against Penn State. It rained twice. Note, Notre Dame won all three of these bad weather games. But in the past, the rest of those games, only three times was the temperature below 40 degrees. Not bad. My long-range forecast is going to be an overcast sky, 30% chance of rain, and 45 degrees. Advantage Florida State. Can you imagine this? Now Bobby Bowden has to worry about wide right, the Farmer's Almanac, and Lee Corso's <laughs> weather forecast. Let me jump down the road a little bit for you. If Alabama wins out in their tough schedule, wins the SEC championship game, Nebraska wins out and struggles a little bit, Alabama should jump them in the polls, which sets up an oh. Alabama. No. Florida State Sugar Bowl oh. game. Yes. No, no, you, no. Now you have really, no. you've got the Copenhagen shoe and combine driving <laughs> farmer Nebraska fans very, very angry at you. That'll well, never happen. You got them mad at you too no, for I saying didn't. that. No, no. Some oh, of yeah. them do drive combines, oh, yeah. but they're not going to get jumped oh, yeah. by Alabama if they win out. That'll do it. West Virginia, Syracuse <laughs> tonight. UCLA, Arizona at 10 30 Eastern Time. Michigan and Wisconsin next from Camp Randall. Mike Tarico at halftime. Enjoy. <laughs> For the first time since the 60s, Wisconsin footballs captured the attention of the entire state. And heading into the final stage of the 93 season, the dreams of smelling roses in January. Basically, we control our own destiny. We don't need other teams to lose or win. We just got to you know, go out and do our job and worry about ourselves. And after that, you know, things will take care of themselves. The Badgers did take care of themselves and their first six opponents as they dominated their way to the school's best start in 81 years. But last week in Minneapolis, with a number 13 national ranking in hand, the Gophers dug Wisconsin an early hole. And for the first time this year, the Badgers could find no way to claw out. With the hors d'oeuvres behind, the meat of the schedule begins today. Meanwhile, all is not well in Ann Arbor. Michigan in an uncharacteristic spot, eighth place in the conference, with a man who shouldered most of the offensive load, sidelined to injury. And today the Wolverines meet a new wave of Badger mania and a Saturday that's not just another day at the camp. Our students are into the game. They come in and they're loud, and they're into it, they follow the game. I mean, it's like a boxer. You know, you go there, you got guys screaming at you, saying you're sorry, you won't get your, get your butt whooped. You know, so you have more than um, one opponent. Regardless of us being in your stadium, regardless of you having all the, all the fans and all the crowds, we're Michigan and, you know, we're going to play. is the place they call the camp. Camp Randall Stadium, Madison, Wisconsin. Big Ten football, number 24 and number 21, set to do battle. Hi, everybody. I'm Brad Nestler with Gary Danielson. These two teams lost a week ago. This game had major Rose Bowl implications this time last week when these two teams were number 13 in the country, Gary, but it doesn't mean it's still not a huge game today. Well, Brad, really, I think it's a bigger football game. There's a lot more pressure in this football game had they both won. Yes, they'd be playing for the Rose Bowl. They still may be playing for the Rose Bowl, but now with a loss, if they lose again, they could be out of the hunt for a major bowl, and that's why this game is pressure-packed. Talk about a loss for the Michigan Wolverines. They lost their star running back Tyrone Wheatley to a shoulder injury suffered in the loss last week to Illinois, and that puts the pressure on another back. Yeah, Ricky Powers is the guy. He's the captain of the football team. There's not a guy on Michigan's football team that looks forward to this game to beginning more than Ricky Powers. He had the big fumble, but he's got plenty of experience, and I expect him to have a good football game. But the guy that has to come through is their big play man, Derek Alexander. They have to find a way to get his hands on the ball because he makes things happen. He can score from anywhere on the field like he did against Illinois a week ago when he caught a 90-yard touchdown pass. He's the guy running the ball, catching the ball, that has to 
come through, make the plays, and if they're able to run the ball, I expect Alec Alexander to have some big plays. Well, Wisconsin certainly knows how to run the ball as they've got a massive front line, one of the best in college football, and the number two rusher in all of college football. Well, the theme around here is physical football. Barry Alvarez loves this guy, Brent Moss. He runs the ball physically behind that offensive line. Offensively and defensively, we're going to see which team is tougher in this game. Gary and I grew up in the Midwest. We remember Wisconsin in the early 60s when they had pretty good football teams. Charlene Hawks wasn't even born the last time this team was this good. Charlene? Yep, I haven't hit the 30 mark yet, and it's been more than that since Madison has seen this kind of excitement. All games sold out, tickets going for 150 bucks, fans holding roses, kids wearing badger heads, and all for a team that, what, outranks Michigan? Now, Michigan has seen a few big games, but Wisconsin today is the first time in nearly a decade that they have a legitimate shot at beating the mighty Wolverines. Quarterback Darrell Bevel said that this was the biggest game of his life. Nose guard Lamarck Shackerford said they're not playing Michigan tradition, they're playing the 93 team. And we'll be right back with the 90 93 version of Michigan, Wisconsin, right after we check in with Mike Dorico. Mike? Charlene, big day in Wisconsin, big day around the country for college football, and we have a triple header. We'll keep you updated with scores and highlights. Let's start our scores and highlights with some of the early games that are already underway. A lot of early games in Philadelphia. Notre Dame against Navy. It was even a three. An onside kick gave Navy the ball in good field position. Jim Kubiak up top, and Dixon with the touchdown catch. Navy just kicked the extra point and leads Notre Dame 10-3 late stages of the first quarter. Miami in the Big East in the Orange Bowl taking on Temple. Ryan Collins caps off a 13 play, 67-yard drive with his five-yard keeper through the Owl defense. Miami kicks the point, looking for 55 in a row in the Orange Bowl, leading by seven. Florida and Georgia in a very soggy Gator Bowl for the cocktail party, all even at three. A couple of Florida turnovers already. In the ACC, Clemson on top in Death Valley, 6-0. They missed the extra point on a wet surface against Maryland. And Georgia Tech on the ground. Dorsey Levins, a one-yard touchdown run. Duke looking for back-to-back -back ACC wins for the first time since 89. We're going to Wisconsin next, Camp Randall Stadium. Derek Alexander coming off the best day of his career against Illinois. Faces Wisconsin. Kickoff next. ESPN's presentation of Big Ten College Football is brought to you by Thrifty Car Rental, historically known for low rates. By AT&T, we help put your world within reach. And by the new Norelco Razors, our closest shave ever. This is Gary Danielson type football. You love this stuff, don't you? Yeah, put a dome up here and I left. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I really, Brad, of all the games you think back and play, and these are the ones you remember in this type of weather. 36 degrees, chance of snow flurries. It's been snowing on Gary Moeller a little bit this past week after his team lost in the late stages to the fighting line on. Brad, Michigan plays their best football when they've been stung like that. It was damn near a scrimmage in practice here before the game. <laughs> There's the fourth season record for Coach Moeller at Michigan. And a guy that has turned the program around at the University of Wisconsin, also in his fourth season, Barry Alvarez. And he has 13 wins in his last 20 games. And he has got not only the city of Madison, but the entire state of Wisconsin electrified over this football team. And all of a sudden, you can feel what we're talking about. 78,000 set for Wisconsin and Michigan. Wisconsin won the toss. They've deferred to the second half and will kick. And John Hall, who had a tough go of it a week ago as a field goal kicker, will kick off. Michigan sends back a couple of dangerous return men. Mercury Hayes, number nine. And Derek Alexander, the guy Gary talked about, number one. Derek Alexander is a clutch performer, and that's what makes him great in these big games. He had the punt return against Penn State that got him through that football game. If they're going to win today, he's going to have to make big plays. Underway at Camp Randall. Taken at the eight. Alexander cuts outside and finds some room. Across the 35 and gives the Michigan offense great field position at the 38-yard line. John Hall, the kicker, had to knock him out. Michigan comes out offensively. Ricky Powers in the spotlight with Tyrone Wheatley out with the injury. Collins at quarterback and Shea Foster, the fullback. Derek Alexander, what a weapon. Career highs in catches and yards in a loss last week with Smith and Burkholder as the tight end. 
Mark Milley is the man that calls the signals up front, anchors that front wall with Runyon, Miller, Marinero, and Trezell Jenkins. First down, Michigan, just inside its own 39-yard line. Play fake. The wide receiver screen skips out of the hands of Derek Alexander, incomplete. Wisconsin defensively. Up front, number two man in the Big Ten in sacks is Mike Thompson with Shackerford at the nose and Fowler, the other left tackle. Chris Hine, 11 tackles a week ago. That's a career high for him with Burgess, Unverzat, and Jurowitz. And in the secondary, Jeff Messenger tied with Scott Nelson, his teammate, with four interceptions to lead the Big Ten with Holt and Kenny Gales. And a second down and 10 for the Michigan Wolverines on their opening drive of the ball game. I'll bet you Ricky Powers can't wait to carry the ball one time. Doesn't get his chance here. It's another play action. The roll by Collins and the throw to Foster. They got tagged at the 42-yard line. Reggie Holt came up. And it'll bring up third down and long. The problem for Michigan this year is they have not been able to stay, sustain a lot of long drives. They've had a lot of big plays, and the reason is they're coming into a lot of situations like this, third and long. They're not getting down to those third and one to two like we've been used to watching Michigan football in the past. Third and six. Foster will be a single setback in a three-wide receiver formation for Todd Collins. Delivers high, but is brought down. Pick up a 12 to Amani Toomer and a first down Wolverine. It's going to come back, though. John Runyon, the left tackle, was holding, I think, on the play. Indeed, the call holding Michigan. Bring it back. Tom Quinn is our referee today. Talking things over with Lamarck Shackerford, the all Big Ten nose guard. And here's the call. Holding on the offense, spot ball, 10 yard penalty, defeat third down. So another third down and much longer for Gary Moeller and the Michigan offense. Yeah, coming from the outside right here, this is the guy. It's going to be the left side. Runyon's going to lock up on the outside against Jurowitz and you can see him grab him down. That was a good call. And it backs it all the way up to the 25 yard line. Third down and 24. Collins pressured. Incomplete. Flag down. He's going to call grounding on the play, too, on the screen pass. Defense very well that time. Carlos Fowler, number 92, smelled it out and made the play. It's not simply that the player is in the area. The referee has the judgment call. Was he trying to ground it? And Collins was trying to ground that to save yardage. That was a good call. In the audio, it was a screen pass. Oh, he's going to pick up the flag. He did. Good job by Todd Collins. Is he's he going to law school? Or? He's, no, he's got a potential to be a basketball <laughs> coach. You know, he can talk to those officials. Chris Stapleton to punt. Wisconsin. Nine men up. Scott Nelson back deep. Stapleton got a beautiful kick. Nelson at the 23, bottles it the handle and gets about five on the return 52 yard kick by Stapleton and Wisconsin now Darrell Bevel set to bring out the Wisconsin offense that looks like this Mark Montgomery leads the way for Brent Moss with all those yards and Bevel at quarterback Lee DeRamus one of the best in the Big Ten a career high nine catches last week in the loss to Minnesota with Dawkins and Roan as the tight end Joe Panos up front, a senior leader in one of the best offensive lines in the Big Ten in all of college football with Stark, Raymer, Rudolph, and Verstegen. So the Badgers work from their own 28-yard line. Brad, offensive coordinator Brad Childress told us yesterday they script their first 15 plays. 
and there's going to be a bunch of runs in them. He <laughs> likes to establish that running game. As you mentioned in the open, they want to play physical football and establish that fact to the Michigan defense from the get-go. As we've got the chains untangled. And Darrell Bevel, sophomore quarterback, one of the oldest sophomores in college football. <laughs> Week last week against Minnesota, but he said to us yesterday, you know, I think I'm having a pretty good season other than that. They established the run early. Brent Moss. He goes out for almost a dozen. And a first down Wisconsin against a Michigan defense with Steve Rakowski filling in for the injured Nina Baga Khan up front and Horn and Stanley join him. Jared Irons has had a great year. 49 tackles in the last four games with Price Morrison and Dyson. And in the secondary, Shante Peoples has three of Michigan's four interceptions, joined by Birch Law and Chuck Winters. One play, one first down. Wisconsin from its own 40. Brent Moss the other way. And another good game. Six more for Moss to the 47-yard line. Peoples and Morrison combined on the hit. Shante Peoples down at the 45 yard line on the second play from scrimmage for Wisconsin. Here's a guy that Michigan is happy to have back as we take another look at Shante Peoples down right there. Steve Morrison, number 36, he provided the leadership that they were missing in an inside linebacker. He's a great football player, as you see out of Birmingham Brother Rice, and he needs to establish and look at those young players in the Michigan huddle and say, we can stop them. They have not been able to stop the inside run very well this year. Take a look at we can see how Peoples got tangled up in the pile. You see he kind of misses the tackle right there and I'm not sure if a few people didn't fall on him or if it was his uh, pull the muscle. Teammate, maybe. Looked like Buster Stanley had a little collision with him too but Peoples the uh, senior who we just talked about is the leading interceptor for this Michigan team. We're, we're going to keep looking at it until we find and figure out it. We, we're on a mission here. We got it, you can see it. Yeah, he kind of gets bent back. I think that time it might have been Steve Stark, number 60, that kind of bent him back when he was kind of laying there exposed. Shante Peoples, who's their big hitter from the strong safety position. You know what he said? To open up our show, it's kind of like a boxing match, but I don't think he thought he was going to go down as early as Tommy Morrison did last night. Three knockdowns. Well, he's got a ch chance to come back. When you get bent back like that, that's what it is. He hurt his back. Yep. And Stark was the guy that got him. Diallo Anderson will check in at that strong safety spot, a freshman. You can really see the difference in personality. Michigan comes out throwing the first two plays. But remember, Minnesota just tore up this Wisconsin defense throwing the ball, so it's a good idea. But Wisconsin comes back, and this is how they've established their 6-1 and one record. They're going to run the ball right at you. Pretty soon you'll see a few easy play-action passes, and that's why Bevel's completing nearly 70% of his passes. 10 or 15 years ago, we'd be talking about the opposite. Just the opposite. Second down four, Wisconsin. We'll try to get an injury update on people shortly. Moss cuts back. He's got another first down into Michigan territory. So it's been the Brent Moss show so far here in the first minute and a half of play. And he has got some tremendous numbers on the year. He'll join the Wisconsin Badgers 1,000-yard club today. Those are his numbers coming in, but he's already got 24 more to add to that 951. And soon we'll join only four other Badgers in history to go over a thousand in a single season. Dawkins in motion. Boss again finds room in the middle. Give him five more before Trevor Price can pull him down. He's got some elusiveness, Gary, but he's also got some power for a little guy. They do, but he can run behind his fullback, Mark Montgomery. Watch number 32 coming from the left side of the screen and cleans out on the freshman Trevor Price. They use Mark Montgomery like a second tight end that Illinois had great success last week against the Michigan defense. Apparently, we won't need to get an injury report on Shante Peoples. He's checked back in. On second down. A little bit tougher go as Moss fights his way about a yard short of a first down. He did get inside the 40. Jared Irons in on the tackle. Jared Irons. This well, is going to bring up third and short. Barry Alvarez, you know, kind of mapped his pre.
program around the coaches that he was with. Hayden Fry built it from the ground up. He was with Lou uh, Holtz at Notre Dame. Run the ball first and everything will happen good after that. And they play sound defense. He's on the right track here. He's turned the program around. Wisconsin leads the Big Ten, almost 59% on third down. And this time it looks like on second effort and a nice push by the right side of his offensive line that may pick up another first down. You can lead the Big Ten in third down conversions when you're third in a yard and a half most of the time and that's really the reason. They run the ball, they're successful early in uh, first and second down, they don't get behind and then they're easy pickups for third down. You know that that was not a pretty play Brad but you're just pushing it a yard yep. and a half. And indeed they did to the first down at the 38 yard line. And here's where they usually come back and hit you with a play action pass now. On balance line, they like to play action pass out of it. Three minutes, 15 seconds into the game, no score, but already the seventh play of the Wisconsin drive. There's the play action. Bevel steps up, goes across the middle, completes it to Moss, who does it as a receiver here. Steve Morrison got it for about a six yard gain. Very conservative. Now the linebackers have to be aware of on balance line, play action pass, plus the hard nose football. You see it. Run the ball to Moss, fake the ball to Moss. Montgomery's just going to check down. This time he hits Moss over the middle for a nice easy pass. Get Moss seven. That's only his fourth catch of the year. Second down and three. Montgomery, the lone setback. Michigan likes to blitz in this situation. Two tight end formation. They'll give it to Montgomery and the fullback. Short of the first down, but he got it inside the 30, and we get it inside to Mike Tirico. Mike. Okay, Brad may have seen the score go by. Notre Dame has tied Navy on this Mark Edwards four-yard touchdown run. Sixth of the year for Edwards. Navy has the ball at midfield. They're playing quite well thus far. And here we're tied scoreless with ten and a half to go first quarter. But well, Wisconsin has taken the opening drive from their own 28 and worked it very close to the Michigan 28. Third and one. Oh, he got popped by Jared Irons again, and I don't think he got the first down. No, uh, Shante Peoples with a strong safety blitz that time. That made it an eight-man front, and it cleaned up for Gerald Irons to be there to clean up on the tackle. Now, with the kicking game in Wisconsin, the way they kick, and really the way Michigan kicks, you got to figure they're both going to go for it in these situations. And they will. Last week, as I told you, John Hall had trouble, missed a couple of field goals that were very makeable against Minnesota. We talked to Barry Alvarez about that, said, Coach, does it change your approach inside the 30? And he said yes, and indeed, when they kick a field goal today, we're going to see a new guy who most of the guys on the team don't even know. But right now, fourth down and a couple of feet, and they're going to try to pick it up on their opening march. Flags down. Bevel throws on fourth and short and has a first down to Montgomery. But keep in mind, penalty markers on the play. You get the idea that they saw the Penn State film and said, they're going to be pinching. We're going to go outside. Automatic first down. Offside, Michigan. You can see a little longer count that time. I think it was Stanley. No, it was uh, from the outside. Offside, on the defense. The penalty's accepted. Matt First Dyson's down, the down. guy who jumped off that time. Still a very sound drive, and they're eating up the clock. And that's the real theory to moving the ball against Michigan. That's been Wisconsin football this year through seven games. First down. Moss. Inside the 20. About a four-yard pickup. Ty Law in on the tackle. Law gets off the top of the pile and irons again off the bottom. Brad, you talked about the offensive line for Wisconsin, and they really are a good one, maybe as good as anyone in the in the Big Ten. You got to give credit to Ohio State; they've got some great football players. But with Raymer, their center, Panos and Vertzeg, and their two tackles, I mean, they've got three big-time football players that could be playing pro football someday. Wisconsin in the Michigan red zone by a yard, second and six. 
Loss on the play for the first time all day. Yeah, Tony Henderson that time just crashed in there and made a great play with penetration, and that's what really stops those slow-hitting plays. Michigan stopping them, and now they're behind in the down and distance at third and long, and that's when Wisconsin has trouble. That's the first time that they've been in this situation in this drive, which after Michigan was three and out, Wisconsin took over about 14 minutes, 15 seconds to go in the quarter. 8.09 left in the quarter, and third down and eight. The Badgers' 12th play of this opening march. Here comes a blitz. Bevel over the middle. Montgomery, the fullback. Did he spin it up for the first down? If not, it's still going to be fourth in a matter of inches, and they'll probably be going for it again. As they unpile, we may have to bring out the sticks. Nice job against the blitz by Bevel here. Absolutely. Brad Childress told us they have to account for the blitz. This time, Irons comes free. That's a hot receiver to the fullback. When two linebackers blitz to the same side, you have to account for it by throwing the ball quickly to your back. That's what they did. Bevel completes it to the fullback. First down. Wisconsin's been impressive inside the opponent's 20-yard line this year. And they're down at the 13 of Michigan. Boss gets it close to the 7. Chuck Winters and Trevor Price. Brent Moss has done much of the load here in the opening drive for Wisconsin. 42 yards already on nine carries. Inside the 20, all touchdowns for Wisconsin. Yeah, they can't kick field goals. That's why. That's a big part of it. Second and four. I tell you what, if they get their 28th touchdown of the year, this place will go wild here in the first quarter. Fumble. Yeah, Bevel, I think, made a great catch. I don't know who caught it. He doesn't have it. No, Bevel's out of the pile. One was of it, his was it the no, Montgomery, it was Montgomery was up there. That saved disaster. Wisconsin's only fumbled seven times this year. They've given up only seven sacks. Those aren't bad statistics either. I don't even know if he touches this time. We got the exchange right there. It splits his hands, come up in midair, and Montgomery does make a great play. Usually it's the defense that grabs those. Dawkins and Doremus, the two wideouts. Watch the fade down here to Doremus. Both to the bottom of your screen. It's third down and four. Bevel had it batted down as he tried to throw. Tony Henderson may be the man that got a hand on it. Incomplete, it's fourth down. Well, here comes a field goal team, and between these two teams, a field goal happens about as often as uh, Rush Limbaugh and Hillary Clinton have lunch. <laughs> and here's a brand new kicker, Rick Schnetzky. I don't think his teammates even know him. <laughs> He has been bugging Barry Alvarez just for a chance. This will be his first field goal attempt as a Wisconsin Badger from 25 yards. He'll become a cult hero if he hits it, and he does right through the middle. Great story. <laughs> Six minutes, seven seconds. Now they know who he is. Wisconsin by three. That's about the only building on State Street that doesn't have a bar in it. State Capitol. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> I think. 6.07 to go first quarter. 3 0 Wisconsin. Ricky Schnetzky. He's meeting all his teammates over behind the net. 25 yard field goal capped out the long Wisconsin drive that took over eight minutes. And now John Hall, the former field goal kicker, and still maybe a field goal kicker. I don't want to <laughs> yeah. pull the plug on John Hall, but Schnetzky. Gets only the second field goal all year for the Badgers. And it's his first try that's good to give his team a 3 0 lead. Mercury Hayes and Derek Alexander await this kick. And Paul knocks it out of the end zone. Well, if you're going to open up at home, you might as well get physical and get a 65-yard scoring drive that took over eight minutes. Even though it's only three points, Gary, I think they established what they wanted to. Absolutely. That was the, the thing that Barry Alvarez said he wanted to do, establish the line of scrimmage and, and run the ball. And I really think that's what Michigan has to do. Get in there, let their, their offensive linemen bang some people and get the tempo of the football game. Michigan looked to be a man short. Finally, here Cooper, the tight end, hustles out into a two tight end set at the 20 yard line.
Davis. Ed Davis goes for about four. Yeah, Ricky Powers was in there for the first series and did not carry the ball, and now Ed Davis is in the football game. So, you know, here we are. You think you're going to get the ball for Ricky Powers, and he can forget the big fumble, but he, he doesn't even get a chance to. And now Davis, who, uh, as you look at Ricky Powers right there, Davis is in the football game, who Barry Alvarez told us yesterday that they recruited very heavily here at Wisconsin, and they have a great deal of respect for him. Ed Davis is a good back, but he's not Tyrone Wheatley. Very few are, I guess. Second down and six. They fake it and throw the in, in and out of the hands of Alexander. Wisconsin covering it, but that ball was never in the possession of Derek Alexander. Oh, nice man. hit. Big time hit. Establishing the physical football game. A few weeks ago against Michigan State, there was a lot of talk that George Perlis said Michigan isn't as tough as they used to be in the papers, at least. Perlis denies it. Now, after the loss to Illinois, even Gary Moeller questioned the toughness of his football team. This is the physical football game that Wisconsin likes to play, and Michigan's going to have to step up if they want to win this game. Todd Collins is probably going to have to step up and throw his fifth pass, too. And he's one for four so far. Third down, six, Michigan. Hayes in motion. Collins, Toomer, has got it. First down, Michigan. Out to the 37-yard line, give him 13 on the pass play. Well, Michigan's got about as out, four outstanding receivers as you could want on one football team. Toomer, just a sophomore from California. I don't know if he's played in much colder weather than this today. Yeah, right. And he really is playing with the cast on his hand still and making catches basically one-handed. Jerry Hanlon, the old offensive line coach for Bo Schembechler, who now does radio for Michigan, said he's the best one-handed receiver in the league. I know that for sure. 37, Michigan with a first down. Badgers think about a blitz, back off that, and Davis takes it up the middle. Across the 40 to the 41, Mike Thompson drops him there. Thompson, the junior out of Portage, Wisconsin, who we said one of the Big Ten sack leaders, seven coming into this game. But earlier in the year when we had Michigan, or rather Wisconsin and Indiana, he was a little banged up. Right now, he is playing great football. He, Shackford, and Fowler about as three of good front guys as you'll see in the Big Ten, and they keep their feet so well up there. Hard to knock down, all three of them. Second down, six for the Wolverines on their second drive of the ball game. This one has netted them the first down, and they whistle it dead as Davis headed toward the sideline. 25 second clock run out, Gary. It appears that just from looking at the body language of Todd Collins, he seems to be upset. Good ball. The illegal snap. Offense. Let's go to Mike Tirico. Mike. In the rain in Jacksonville, Georgia, down 10, drives the field, eight plays in 83 yards, and here's the end. Three yards, Eric Zire to Bryce Hunter. Dogs down three. Boy, is there anybody in college football hotter than Eric Zire? <laughs> Air Georgia, they have really played well the last few weeks with Zire airing it out to Hunter and company. Here it's 3-0 Wisconsin on a Ricky Schnetzky 25-yard field goal. And a legal snap called against Michigan. We'll back it up to second down and a long 11. Got me on that one. <laughs> I guess they're not allowed to snap in between their legs anymore. <laughs> Might have double clutched it a little bit and you know not snapped it cleanly, but I, I really couldn't tell. His head is still moving, and I, I don't know. Everything seems to be stopped right there. I, I don't get that call. Unless it was a delay of game, uh, that's the only thing I can think of. We don't hear of a lot of illegal snap calls, so. You know, Gary Moeller didn't argue too much. So Gary's going to see a legal snap. What is that on this side? <laughs> That's right. It's on the backside here. <laughs> Second down, 11. Burkholder, the tight end in motion. Collins in trouble again. He got the screen to Davis somehow. But Davis gets no gain out of it. And that was Chad Cascat who read it beautifully and made the tackle. Well, Mark Shackelford is the guy who puts pressure on this time. Melia turns him loose pretty quickly that time, but Collins does get rid of the ball, so that's successful. 
But when you got people playing assignment defense, and that's what Wisconsin's doing right now, coming up and making good tackles in the open field. Third and a dozen for the Wolverines. Gary talked about that great depth at wide receiver. Three of the four are out there. Collins, deep middle. Alexander got hit by Scott Nelson. Incomplete, and Michigan will have to punt. So let's go to Mike Tirico. Brad, Navy can throw the ball. Jim Kubiak, their quarterback, has the all-time MIDI record already in a season for completions and yards. Here to Michael Jefferson, this 30-plus yard connection sets up a Brad Stramanak touchdown, and Navy's up seven. Oh, Nelly. Huh? I got to believe NBC <laughs> and Bob Costas are ready to slit their wrist right now. Here's a punt coming up from Stapleton. His first one went 52 yards, and this one's not going to be too far short of that, I don't think. Nelson has to backpedal to the 12. And got back to the 20 with a penalty marker down at the end of the play. That was a 53-yard Stapleton punt. And let's wait on the flag. Yeah, they're, they're going to call blocking from behind down there. Well, that's going to put Wisconsin in a bit of a hole. They would have been at the 20. This will back them up halfway as Tom Quinn tells us illegal block Wisconsin and so the Badgers will be on offense right now we'll take a timeout 323 to go in the quarter Badgers by three Brad Nestler Gary Danielson and Charlene Hawks at Camp Randall Stadium Madison Wisconsin where the home team leaves three nothing with 323 remaining first quarter the illegal block on the punt return of Scott Nelson has made the line of scrimmage the eight yard line now for Wisconsin. Their opening drive, 16 plays for that field goal. Boss covers it up. Got across the 15 and out to the 17 yard line. He's going to be close to another first down. Let's check in with Charlene. Brad on Michigan's two possessions, two costly penalties, and we overheard one of the offensive coaches talking to some of the guys on the bench during that last series. He was yelling at him, cadence, cadence, cadence. Apparently they're not listening to the quarterback's cadence, and that's costing them. Yeah, and you can see Collins from up here. He was constantly having to turn around just to bark things to his running backs. When you've got 78,000 screaming in your ear, and there most of them are wearing red and white, Proud that's nice. the problem. <laughs> two tight end set. Wisconsin as Moss did get a first down. Nice play action. Bevel loads it. Intended for Doremus incomplete. Well, I tell you, Steve Morrison is really still limping out there. He hurt his foot in pre-camp. I saw on that drop, I was watching him, had my eyes on him. He still is not 100%, but they need his leadership. Steve Morrison reads the play quickly, going back in the zone. Look at how he's kind of still laboring to get back there, and he really is not playing at 100%. You can see from that replay. Brings up second down at 10 at the 18. Wisconsin really hasn't had to complete a pass yet. And now they do. Montgomery, who has the only two catches today, gets it across the 20. Great play by Ty Law that time. Came up, read the play real quick, made back. Montgomery have to stop and stutter a little bit, and that's why he didn't get the big play. It looked when he threw the ball that they had something going right there. Dyson comes from the outside. They let him go, dump off the play real quick. He's got the ball, but watch Ty Law break his momentum, and then... Everybody comes up and cleans up Shante Peoples with the tackle. Let me correct myself, Montgomery two catches today. Moss also has one though, so three completions today, all to the backfield of Wisconsin. Wisconsin needs to be careful here. They do not want to give Michigan the ball in with an interception or a turnover now. And guys like Ty Law are thinking about that right now on third and seven. They go to another back. And Fletcher's got a first down at the 30-yard line. Hey, if that short middle keeps working, keep using it, huh, Gary? Boy, that's just too easy right there. Throwing it back, that's a three-yard pass for a first down. Michigan dropped in a deep zone. No one covered the back out of the backfield. I don't know if it was a missed assignment or what, but number 41 coming out of the backfield that time. No one locks up on it. You see Michigan's in a zone. Rome kind of shields off Shante Peoples, and that's pitch and catch for a first down. 
So Wisconsin with some room to work now. Starting at their own eight, they've moved it to the 30 yard line and a big edge in first downs. Very little gain for Moss on this play. We'll give him a yard and we'll give him over a thousand for the season. And Brent Moss joins some pretty good company, becomes only the fifth Wisconsin back to be a thousand yard rusher. There's his numbers now with 10 touchdowns on the season. Alan Amici, former Heisman Trophy winner, did it back in the 50s. And then guys like Rufus Ferguson, Billy Merrick, and Larry Emery have all been added to that list. And now you can put Brent Moss's name in there. Second down and nine. Just inside the 31. Nice play action bootleg by Bevel, and he completes it to the tight end, Roan. And Roan's going to be very close to a first down at the 40. And while we look at that, let's go to Mike Tirico. Mike. Speaking of completions to tight ends, Eric Zire back to pass. A little shovel. That's something Georgia added to Shannon Mitchell. 13 touchdowns in the last three and a half games for Zire. Dogs up four. Wow. What if Georgia's record was better? Eric Zire would be right behind Charlie Ward's name, probably in the Heisman Trophy race right now. He really is. And, you know, they really have turned it around by just throwing the ball down there and just giving it to the guy who's their best football player and letting him throw. We're into the last half minute of the first quarter here. 3 0 Wisconsin leading the Michigan Wolverines. Third down, less than a yard. Bevel will try to do it himself and does. Give him a couple. And as you saw, J.C. Dawkins, <laughs> first down, Wisconsin. Daryl Bevel, he has been quite a leader for this team. Had an off week last week against Minnesota. Threw for a school record 423 yeah. yards, but he's also intercepted five times. Yeah, he had an off week and threw for 400 yards. That, <laughs> that isn't bad. We talked to Brad Childress about his throws, where they misread, and he said, no, most of them were poor throws. And I think you can live with poor throws. He's reading correctly and throwing to the right guy. Done both the reading and the throwing pretty well so far today. First down, Wisconsin. Sprint draw to Moss. Boy, spins his way for seven more and got it right to midfield and brings our first quarter to a close. Brett Moss with 60 yards, Wisconsin with a field goal and a three point lead. A fresh 15 minutes set to start the second quarter. And the first quarter in the first 15 minutes was virtually all Wisconsin. This is the ninth play of the drive. They're at midfield, second down at two. Straight up the middle, Montgomery. First down to the 44-yard line. Tell you, anytime you need yards on this football team, it wouldn't be a bad idea running the ball right at your center, Corey Raymer, who I think is the best Big Ten center. He can stand up his man and takes him any way he wants to go. A very strong player as you take a look at the time of possession, as Brad was alluding to. It has been all Wisconsin. Michigan already has had a couple drop passes, Brad, and two uh, procedure penalties, and, and that's really what's been stopping their drives. It's a first down at the 44-yard line for Wisconsin. Two tight end set, Nyquist and Roan. But it's Brett Moss, the 38. Chuck Winters from the secondary, along with Alfie Birch in on the tackle. Some of the scores elsewhere in the SEC, Tennessee up 11. Virginia, that big win over North Carolina last week, and now State out to an early lead there. Georgia Tech needs something to go well for them. And so far it is against Duke. So far things have gone well for Wisconsin. They lead 3-0. They've controlled the clock in the game. And they've got second and four at the Michigan 37. This time not much, but Montgomery spins off a would-be tackle and got to the 35. Steve Morrison, guy that kind of had him tangled up, but Montgomery not only has size, he has some maneuverability and he's got unbelievable speed for a fullback. Yeah, he's about 4'3", 4'4", and everybody, you know, you believe it, at 220 pounds maybe. He's really their secret weapon of their offense, I believe. He's like having one more great blocker in there and on every type, uh, type of a play. You can put him to either side and he really helps make this line go uh, with their tight end, Roan, who's a good blocker also. 
trouble with the chain. You would think, Brad, that somebody would invent a better idea than this chain thing, you know? <laughs> I mean... Lasers. Oh, yeah, I mean, something. <laughs> I mean... First down. We mentioned Steve Morrison being part of that last tackle. Charlene's got more on him right now. Brad, a few moments ago, you were talking about Steve Morrison not being 100%. Well, he told me that all practice this week, he has been in practice, he's been rusty, and he said that he has been a step or two behind on his timing, but that for the last five weeks, he has been in on every meeting, all the films, been on every play, and so he's mentally he's been there, and he recognizes that just his presence in the game, that he can check off faster than some of the younger guys, he's not hesitant, makes him valuable, even though he's lacking a bit on timing. Wisconsin with a first down. Bevel play action going deep. Doremus for a jump ball incomplete. Alfie Birch out there with him one on one. And that's what it becomes in many of those cases, Gary, is throw it out there and let Doremus try to go up and get it. We saw that against Indiana. He, and he can. He's got a 42 inch vertical jump. And when Bevel's knows that he's going to have man-on-man -man coverage. He's just going to look for his favorite receiver right here. Bevel coming back, watch his eyes. He knows he's going to the Ramos one-on-one, put it up in the air. Good things usually happen there. Ball kind of slid in the wind a little bit, and the Ramos misjudged it. Bevel says the Ramos makes a lot of my throws look a lot better than they are. <laughs> Second down and 10. Wisconsin leading 3-0, 13-21 to go first half. Brent Moss outside. Inside the 30 to the 29, he is an excellent cutback runner. Showed it again there. Brad Childress told us that they were going to attack Michigan's outside linebackers. Matt Dyson, who's got somewhat of a bad knee still, and Trevor Price, the freshman. We're looking at the hat of uh, Brad Childress right there. He can barely <laughs> see everything but his mustache. That's right. He's the guy calling the plays right there. But they're going to knock those guys out. They think they can run off tackle, and when they start closing hard, they're going to try to log them in and run outside. Third down and five coming up. This is a 14 play drive so far. Their scoring march traveled 16 plays. Michigan with the time. Bevel over the middle, around the tight end. First down, Wisconsin. I'll tell you, Michigan is going to be forced to lock up man to man on those third and medium calls because that's what they're going to get. They're going to get a delay out of the backfield. And if the linebackers drop deep, they're just going to drop it off to the delay man. Shante Peoples' left side of your screen is really playing linebacker in the dime. Watch him. He drops back in his zone. There's an e That's like a handoff. I mean, I could still throw that one. Right I think there. they've gotten every third down conversion that way. Five of seven. Remember, they came in 58% to start, and that's why. Those are easy. And look at the total yardage. Wisconsin 130. And moving down near that red zone of Michigan again at the 21-yard line. Moss to the 18. We go to Mike Tirico. Okay, let's start. The last time Notre Dame had the ball, Mark Edwards, the true freshman, his second touchdown run of the day to even the game at 17. But Navy gets the ball back and says, no, we're not content with a halftime tie. Up top, Jim Kubiak to Jim Screen. Yes, it's a screen pass. Yes, it's a touchdown. And the middies lead by seven towards halftime. How do you keep track of who's who in that game? There's so <laughs> I know. many gold helmets it's out It's like there. an inter-squad doesn't it? <laughs> Second down, six. Flags down. Moss down at the 15-yard line. Shante Peoples. Trevor Price in on the hit. Yeah, I think Moss kind of flinched in the backfield behind Bevel that time. Moss was the guy in motion. That's a call. He's been in motion all year. Boy, he's had six straight 100-yard games, and he is well on his way in that direction again this afternoon. Already with 77 here, and we are just into the second quarter. This Five ball, illegal motion, on the offense. Five-yard penalty, repeat second down. As you can see in the background right there, that's Moss over Bevel's shoulder, just flinches a bit. And when you're leaning forward, yes, the back could be in motion, but when you're leading forward, they'll call that illegal procedure. And it makes it second down and 11. Back at the 22-yard line. This is the situation Wisconsin likes to go two tight ends as we look at Barry Alvarez, who I think is the best-dressed coach in the Big Ten, by the way. <laughs> 
I tell you what, he has up the sales of a lot of the Bucky Badger stuff around here with the, the golf shirts he wears and the hats and the coats, and they're selling more than they can handle before games here, they say. Second and 11. Blitz. Dawkins to the 15. First catch by a wide receiver today. Well, he's their second leading receiver, the one-two punch for Wisconsin, number one and number two, J.C. Dawkins. And, you know, he's really earned his playing time around here. Barry Alvarez was very critical of him early in his career, and he said, J.C., if you want to play football, you got to have better work habits, and you just got to get in there and earn it. And he took his advice, worked hard, and he's found the playing field. In fact, Barry Alvarez went to J.C. Dawkins High School yeah. and gave a talk and said to all his fans and people that he played high school football in front of, I don't know if he wants to play or not. And the next season, and this season, he has come out and been brilliant. 78 yard march so far. Third down at three, Wisconsin. First down at the 10 yard line of Montgomery. The offensive coaches for Wisconsin question how well Matt Dyson played in space. What that means is when Dyson isn't rushing the quarterback, can he cover the backs in the secondary? Every time Bevel finds Dyson or one of the outside linebackers in coverage, he's throwing the ball right out to him. You see Dyson, he's right there, but he's not making the plays. And that's what Gary Moeller said about his team. Some of our guys got to start making some big plays. Mark Montgomery doesn't carry the ball much, but that's his third catch today. First down at the 10, and maybe a yard for Moss. That's all. Steve wow. Morrison holding on. You bet. He might be playing at about 75%, but he used all 75% that time to quickly read the play, get in the backfield, and make the play. We talked about what Moss has done this season. Opened up with 74 against Nevada, and since then has been on some kind of tear. We saw him against Indiana with his career high, 198, but six straight games of 100 plus which is a Wisconsin record and as we said he's closing in on 80 now here in the first half there's the numbers 78 on 16 rushes second and goal at the nine Moss back to the line of scrimmage and that's about all again Steve Morrison defeated Mark Montgomery the great lead blocker in this Wisconsin offense when we watch the Indiana game and watch the films, Montgomery does not miss a lot of blocks. And that's what a great linebacker can, can do, Steve like Morrison. Steve Morrison. Come in there, defeat some blocks, and that's really the key on that play. Well, Wisconsin's used its tight end pretty effectively yeah. when they get down in these kind of situations. I'm not trying to call a play here, but well, it's third goal from the nine. Let, let me call one. I think they're <laughs> going to go to Doremus on the fade pass. Although Michigan does not appear to be in man-to-man -man coverage. They're in zone again. Doremus and Dawkins both split to the top of your screen. Pressure coming on third and goal at the nine to the end zone. Skips off what almost was an interception. I'll tell you. Doremus made a great player. That ball would have been intercepted. Ty Law, red bevel, cut inside and could have had the interception on the play. You see it. Michigan's going to drop into a zone look that time. Ty Law's outside playing in and out coverage. He sees Bevel throw the ball. He cuts inside. Now watch Doremus come in, almost interfering on the play. Really, if it would have been the other way around, they would have called interference had Ty Law done that. So in comes number 98. He's not even in some of the programs today. Ricky Schnetzky. I just like saying it. The sophomore from Mequon, Wisconsin. He's two for two from 25 and 26. And that puts Wisconsin up six. Eight minutes, 34 seconds to go, first half. Barry Alvarez, when we talked to him yesterday, I said, Coach, you know, you had trouble kicking field goals against Minnesota. You've had trouble all year. Do you do you try something different? Have you found anybody in the student body that uh, <laughs> could be your kicker? And he goes, yeah, you know, I got this kid who's been bugging me all season long just for a chance. I said, what's his name? He says, Schnetzky. I said, what's his first name? He said, I don't know. <laughs> and Ricky Schnetzky is the cult hero in Madison so far with two field goals Wisconsin. and a big smile on his face. He one, just capped a 21-play Wisconsin drive. Michigan's getting pushed around the football field, but they're only tra trailing six to nothing. They have to feel good about that. Alexander on the hop at the four. And Alexander out to about the 25-yard line. That's where Michigan will try to get something going offensively. Gary Moeller's Wolverines trail by six.
ESPN's presentation of Big Ten College Football is brought to you by Saab Cars USA, who proudly presents the all-new Saab 900 beginning November 15th. And by Smooth Bush Beer, an easy drinking Bush Life. Now they're playing the blues in the Ratskeller inside Wisconsin Memorial Union. They're not singing the blues outside, though. Six-nothing Badgers. 8.29 remaining first half. Michigan from its own 26-yard line. Powers. That's not Powers. Biakabatuka with a carry. And he gets it only for a couple of yards. Tim Biakabatuka is going to play some football in this football game. They like him, a freshman. They believe that he can make some big plays. But I'm still surprised they've not got the ball in their captain's hands. He expects senior leadership. He's got to get him involved in the game. Ricky Powers hasn't touched it. Second down at 10. Crowd getting into it for the Badger defense. And you can tell Collins is really having to bark again to his tailback and his wideouts. Davis covers up the football and gets covered up. Shackerford. Let's say it together. It's a shack attack <laughs> in the backfield of Michigan. This kid can really play football. He's a guy nobody wa really wanted when Barry Alvarez came here. The last recruit went down there and they told him, stay ready. If the other guys we want don't come to Wisconsin, we'll take you. Turned out to be the best nose tackle in the Big Ten. And the biggest thing out of Gary, Indiana, since Michael Jackson. <laughs> that might be an argument right now. <laughs> Up here it will be. Third down and nine. That's what I meant. <laughs> Collins tells Tom Quinn, I can't hear anything. Neither can the rest of my teammates. I'll tell you, Todd Collins said he could not call audibles. They're going to warn the crowd. but. You know, they warned the student section early in the game to quit throwing marshmallows at the Michigan players, and that only brought out more marshmallows. I doubt if this will quiet them down. At least what it did with the marshmallows is they quit using quarters and only put pennies in them when they <laughs> threw them. They'll try it again. Third and nine when Michigan comes out of the huddle, and quite frankly, as you take a look at the marshmallow count here at Camp <laughs> Randall Stadium, I think it'll be twice as loud when they come out of the huddle this time. We're about to find out, and so is Todd Collins. In this situation, the strategy uses the quarterback is get up there, have a quick snap count, and get the ball off. That's your only chance. It doesn't appear that loud to me. It obviously does to Todd Collins. This is a strategy that Gary Moeller has employed before. He used it against Ohio State at the Ohio State game two years Second ago. Crowd noise. Would you make the NCAA announcement, please? tell you if you think an NCAA announcement is going to work in a place like Madison Wisconsin you're probably mistaken well they could take timeouts away and that's really the worry right here they have quieted somewhat go to nine Stanley first down uh, Walter Smith excuse me Walter Smith to the 40 12 yard pickup I think Walter Smith might be the toughest football player on the Michigan team, and he's the guy that can really light a fire on the team. He's caught a pass in at least every game in this series and uh, this season, and you see Collins get some good protection. It's man-to-man -man coverage, and he dumps it off to a real tough, good football player, Walter Smith. 
in this football game Michigan has not been past its own 41 yard line they've got a first down right now at the 40. Talk about spending the entire half on your end of the field but still as Gary said they only trail six nothing can be one strike and they could have the lead in and out of the hands of Derek Alexander and again Nelson and Holt and Gales back there to break it up yeah, Alexander really dropped that pass again before he was hit Kenny Gales was right there closing on the play but that was a well thrown ball by Collins and watch this ball gets bobbled before he gets hit that's two passes really that Alexander has had in his hands and did not come up with the catch and, and of course the first play of the game too when they threw the quick screen so that's really three drops yep. by Alexander second and ten Michigan 6 16 to go in the half Burkholder the tight end in motion Wisconsin brings the blitz and it pays off Fowler with a tackle. And Collins Carlo got great push that time into the sec into the defensive offensive backfield for Michigan. And between Fowler and Shackelford, they're not controlling Michigan, that is, the line of scrimmage. Third and long again. Carlos Fowler making his 29th career start for Wisconsin. Big play there forces the third and 11 that Gary talked about. The last three third downs for Michigan has been third and 12, third and nine, and third and 11, Brad. They still haven't crossed their own 41 this half. In fact, they're back at the 39 now. Collins deep. Man out there, and he's got it to Tumor. And we said it could be one strike. And it could change the complexion. That strike is 54 yards. Amani Toomer again playing with a bad hand. This time, Wisconsin blitzes, comes after Collins. And this is a great read. Remember the last time he threw a square in. This time, Nelson comes up to hit the crossing route. He throws it over his head and goes to Toomer down the middle. Recall, Brad, you remember the long pass, and it's a perfectly thrown ball and a catch over the head. When Nelson came up and hit Derek Alexander, well, the next time he saw the same coverage, he went over the top. A couple of catches now for Toomer, and he sets up the Michigan offense. First and goal at the Wisconsin 7. Davis and Ritchie try to hear the signals of Collins, who's running out of time, down to three on the 25-second clock. Davis ran into one of his own blockers, and then a wave of red. Chris Hyde. Eric Unverstadt and company combined on the stop. What a job by Unverstadt that time. He had outside leverage on the back and he did not bite at all. He knew he had help coming from the inside and he just kept his leverage, kept his leverage all the way. And finally is inside pursuit and Unverstadt makes the tackle. Michigan's done extremely well inside opponents 20 yard lines this year as well. 16 touchdowns and four field goals. So 20 of 23. Second and goal at the Badger nine. Yakov Atuka, the single setback. He gets the call on the draw play. To the five yard line. Shackerford and Unverzat again in on the tackle. Yakov Atuka is a quick starter from the backfield that time. You could see on the draw play, he hesitated and then goes. He's got a great start with the football. That's what goalie Gary Muller likes about him. And really explode through the hole. There's the name that covers a whole county almost across <laughs> the back. Bianca Batuka. His first name is Tishamunga, but they just call him Tim, and that's what we're going to go with the rest of the day. Ninth play of the Michigan Drive, and it's third and goal at the Wisconsin Five. They trail 6 0. Foster met head on. Jeff Messenger put a hat on him. No gain. It's fourth down. Again, Collins had no choice but to throw the ball to his fullback. Wisconsin came with a blitz again. Almost every third down play, Wisconsin has been coming after Collins. He had to dump the ball off with the fullback. His protection wouldn't pick it up. And Messenger comes up and cleans up on the tackle. Messenger this year, the boundary corner. Boy, used the boundary that time, didn't he? Drop Foster right on it. Elizabeth 
A 22 yard field goal attempt to try to cut the Wisconsin lead to three. And he does. So Michigan puts a long drive in order, and they too have to settle for three for Peter Elizabeth. Six three, Badgers in front. Michigan, a long drive. They also have to settle for a field goal. 68 yards and 10 plays, just under six minutes they used. But offensively, what was a, just a year ago, virtually number one in every department, 93? Nope, sorry. Yeah. 666, a couple of fives. And thus the four and three mark and two and two in the Big Ten. And, and really, that's a story. Last week against Illinois, everybody focuses in on the final fumble and the fourth down pitch and catch by Johnny Johnson to, to steal the game. But if you look at the stats from that game, Illinois really outstatted Michigan. You know, you take away that big 90-yard catch. Of course, they earned it, but that was a, a right. big play against for Michigan. But the difference in Michigan's team that I see watching them on the film is they're not mashing out those four and five-yard games like we used to see before. It's an all-big play or, all, or nothing, really. Remy Hamilton to kick. Carl McCullough and Terrell Fletcher back deep for Wisconsin. Says it's mine, and here he comes to the 20, and that's it. Hello, the highly touted freshman of Minnesota. Well, Brad, we all talked about what kind of football game we could have, and you know, we kind of both agreed that turnovers aside, it was a pretty even match. The only game we didn't think we would have was a field goal contest. That's exactly right. <laughs> we talked to both coaches about the fact that. They probably hoped it would not come down to kickers, and so far that's what we've had to end. Good looking drives, but all we've got is threes up there. Six three. Wisconsin in front. They've got 234 to work before halftime. We'll see how they play at 80 yards from the Michigan end zone. Fletcher. Terrell Fletcher. He's got a first down. Out to the 32 yard line. That's that little bit of change you can get when you take out Brent Moss and put in Terrell Fletcher. We'll put in Mike Tirico right here, Mike. And we'll go to the Southwest, Brad. Robert Hall of Texas Tech already up 10-0. It's Hall to Lloyd Hill. Hall to Hill, and well, it's 17-0. Texas Tech in Austin. Here at 6-3, Wisconsin. 2.20 left first half. Wide opens Duranis. Working on Alfie Birch down there, and he got him turned around and picks up a first down that gets in to Wolverine territory. 21 yard pass play. First catch of the day for famous Amos. Famous Lee Doramus, here one, it is. One thing you have to like about uh, Ramus is he can go at Doramus, go up and get the ball, but look at the good throws right there, hitting him right in the face with the throw. Bevel extremely accurate in this football game so far. The teams have a full complement of three timeouts for that. Fletcher, only about a yard. The way Wisconsin normally alternates Fletcher and Moss, two very talented tailbacks, is that Moss gets the first couple of series, Fletcher gets the next couple of series, and then they look to each other and decide when they need a little bit of a rest and kind of do it on their own. Yeah, right. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> Uh, I think with Brett Moss, after the first few series, if Brett Moss is real hot, it's hard to take him out of the game. Right. Well, I remember at their first two series went 65 and 83 yards, so he probably needs a little breather. <laughs> Second down and nine. Here comes Fletcher again. Got around one man. Can't escape Ty Law, but he gets a nice gain to the 43-yard line. Don't forget. The evening edition of the Residence in College Football Scoreboard coming up at 7 Eastern tonight. Then primetime doubleheader. We start off with number 13, West Virginia, against the Orange Men of Syracuse. And then we take you to the left coast. Big Pac-10 battle. Number 7, Arizona. And J.J. Stokes in red hot. Number 16, UCLA. 10.30 tonight. So we've got a triple header. Two more yet to come here on ESPN. A couple of the key players aren't in on this drive. Steve Morrison from Michigan wasn't in on the drive, although they've gone to nickel now, and Corey Rain with the center has been replaced by Brian Patterson. We'll have to watch that. 
Every third down's big. This is third and six as Wisconsin tries to get more points before halftime. Dawkins made the catch. I think he stepped out just a shade in front of the marker, but the sticks are on the far side of the field, so if they bring it over to measure, who knows? He might get a break. Ty great, Law bumped him out. Great break on the ball by Ty Law. Look how close this is. That's a gutsy throw all the way across the field just to pick up, you know, not even the first down. Fourth down and that much. Fourth and inches. And remember, Wisconsin does not have their big center in there, Corey Raymer. As you see that... Uh, Barry Alvarez thinks we need a commercial. Important moment. He's right. We do need a commercial with 106 left in the half. Wisconsin center Corey Raymer has uh, been taken back into the locker room. He's got a problem with migraines, and they're not quite sure if that'll take him out for the full game, but uh, they expect him probably to be back next half. He's back out there on the sideline now, but that's a problem that has uh, changed the anchor spot for Wisconsin. Brian Patterson in now the center position for Barry Alvarez. Fourth down and inches, Wisconsin. Michigan stacked up tight. Fletcher, first down to the 35-yard line. Needed inches, he got two yards and some inches. And it's a minute two remaining for Wisconsin. They're going to try to hurry it up here with two timeouts remaining. Clock remains stop while they move the sticks, and that will give Bevel time to bark instructions to his teammates. And now Tom Quinn stops play. Don't tell me they've got that chain tangled up on oh, the yeah. sideline again. Yeah. You know, those guys would not be great fly fishermen. <laughs> Well, they'd have that thing in somebody's hair. They'd have it up. You can see it's in the cords. And when you need to stop the clock on the Michigan bench, what you do is lift it up and go underneath it and everything like that. And that gets you an extra timeout. I, I tell you, somebody's got to invent a better way. There, there just must be. This has been there since the beginning of football. And we're still using the chain gang. Of course, it's for those guys, good seats. You know, they get to watch the <laughs> game right down there. They get to wear those flashy blue Big Ten. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, they've got it straightened out now, I guess. Well, Wisconsin's definitely got two or three plays called now. <laughs> there we go. 102, 101, a minute left in the half. First down, Badgers. Bevel scrambles. He'll run, get what he can, which is about eight. And then he got it right behind the knees from Jared Irons. But he's up and okay. I'll tell you, if Daryl Bevel was making $5 million a year in the NFL and a linebacker hit him like that, that would be a flag because they would call that in the NFL. I'm not quite sure right here. He scrambles out. Watch Irons, number 37. Bevels going out of bounds, catches him over the line. Usually that's called roughing uh, a penalty. And there's there's Jared Irons. So you think they would have called that on Gerald Irons, his name, yeah. on the old uh, Cleveland Brown and L.A. Raider, Oakland Raider in those days? Bevel, Dawkins. First down, Wisconsin. Boy, they have crisply moved this thing down the field. They started with about 2.20 left in the half. Now 48 seconds remain. They still have two timeouts left. And Ricky Schnetzky is going to start warming up that left leg. <laughs> no, I, really, Wisconsin hasn't been stopped. They haven't punted in this half. And now with the kicker, they're just working it for a field goal. They got great confidence. Three wide outs. Michael London joins Dawkins and Doremus for Bevel on a first down. Bevel steps up and fires to Dawkins again, and he's got another catch at the 12-yard line. Alfie Birch knocked him out. That's four catches for Dawkins. We talked about how much improved he is from a year ago. He really is. But watch Bevel. A week ago against Minnesota, Brad Childress said he got on him a little bit, but not stepping into his throws. In this game, you can see great follow through. Bevel has stepped into every throw, but he has not had any pressure. You don't have pressure in your face. You can step into your throws. Second down and four. Draw play to Fletcher. Broke a couple tackles. Fletcher. Okay. 
The first two drives belong to Brent Moss. The third Wisconsin drive belongs to number 41. That's the way you do it, running a draw play. Fletcher, stop and start getting in the end zone. 12 yards. The extra point is good. Wisconsin with a near perfect two minute drill. Terrell Fletcher caps it from 12 yards out and it's Wisconsin by 10. What's up, St. Louis? Okay, what's, up? <laughs> what's up, St. Louis? Terrell Fletcher's up 12 yards for a touchdown and his team's up 13 to 3. Capping off an 80 yard Wisconsin drive. In 10 plays, two minutes, one second. As I said, a near perfect two minute drill. You can't get much better than that. Bevel was perfect, and Fletcher took it in at the end of the drive. And Michigan knows that they are in a fight in Madison, Wisconsin today. Squip kick. Big hit at the 33 yard line. Did the ball come out? Wisconsin says yes. The officials haven't agreed yet. <laughs> and still don't. It's Michigan ball. One more look at the touchdown. Watch from the outside. Coming in here, the safety blitz, that's what really caught Michigan. He's going to be on block from the outside. If it was a pass play, it would have been a good call against the draw. They caught Michigan with no pursuit pattern. Fletcher into the end zone, man-to-man -man coverage. That's how you make big plays against the blitz. Give credit again to the season that these running backs for Wisconsin have had to that offensive line. But Moss and Fletcher are a couple of the better cutback runners, I think, College football. Fletcher proved it there against that blitz. And now it'll be Michigan trying to squeak out a draw here. And Mike Thompson says nothing doing. Thompson with the tackle on Bianca Matuka. Michigan's got all their timeouts left and still plenty of time. 20 seconds. And we do have a timeout. 20 seconds left in the half. We'll take a break too and be back to Camp Randall Stadium in a moment. 20 seconds away from halftime. That's when Mike Tirico and Lee Corso, Greg James, and the gang will bring you all the scores and highlights. Key SEC matchup, Georgia-Florida, the Battle of the Gold Helmets going on, Notre Dame and Navy, all that more 20 seconds away. Collins. Tuber has been his main man today, and amani has got another one. 14 yards on the pickup. Monty Toomer turning around, catching that ball off. You can see if you just pan down a little bit lower, guys, that he has a cast there on his right hand. And that's really incredible, making the catch like that with a cast still on his hand. A great catch on that ball. 48, first down, long throw. This time Alexander holds on and gets out of bounds at the 42 with seven seconds left. First catch for number one today. They got time for one more play to get into field goal range. Elizabeth's field goal range is not too deep as long as this year's. They still have two timeouts. I'm not I'm wondering why they don't take a timeout here and just call the play. They must have great confidence in calling the play at the line of scrimmage. With seven seconds, they won't use both of them. Can't take timeouts with you. Won't do them any good in the locker room. This might be their last play if it takes too long. Skips off the hands. Reggie Hall with an interception. was very close. If that ball would have been a foot, another yard inside of Reggie Holt taking that thing and going the other way. When you throw the flat, look at if that ball just goes one yard less, Reggie Holt may take that thing all the way the other way. That's why you wonder with a timeout. Again, Michigan's going to go into the locker room with two timeouts. Barry Alvarez team has time for one play. They will head to the locker room with a halftime advantage. And this will be the only play they didn't gain yards for him in the first half. It's going to be a knee. It's going to be a knee. It'll be a loss of about one for Bevel. And Wisconsin in front of the hometown crowd. And they are loving it. 
at Camp Randall Stadium. Intermission. Wisconsin with a lead on the Michigan Wolverines. It's the Badgers 13, Michigan 3. Halftime at Camp Randall Stadium in Wisconsin, leading Michigan eighth place in the Big Ten, Michigan. Trailing by 10 as we welcome you to halftime. Coach Corso, Craig James, a very interesting early afternoon, hasn't it been? Notre Dame and Navy, the top story thus far in college football. People say, why continue this series? After all, Notre Dame has won 29 straight over Navy. Well, earlier this week, Lou Holtz said, we're not a very good football team. And we all laughed and chuckled. They're the number two team in the country. Well, Navy can throw the ball. Jim Kubiak to Damon Dixon, 31 yards. Navy takes a 10-3 lead. In the second quarter, Mark Edwards, the freshman, that's his second rushing touchdown, and the game is tied at 17. Still in the second, time winding down. Kubiak, who already this season has set records for Navy with completions and passing yardage. How does he hit Jim Screen? Perfect in between the two defensive backs, and look at Screen outrace the Notre Dame secondary. Navy at the half, 24-17. Oh, to be a fly in the locker room wall at the vet at halftime to hear Coach Holtz, whatever he said. Here's the result in the second half. McDougal, first drive, scrambling away from the should have been sack. Up top to Lake Dawson. Gets away, stays in bounds. He covers 45 yards, tied at 24. Notre Dame gets the ball back. Randy Kinder. Running right, cutting it up the middle of the field, and that speed takes over. A 70-yard run. Notre Dame, two touchdowns in the first three minutes and 20 seconds of the second half to take a seven-point lead in this game. Navy in the first half averaged 7.8 yards per play. So certainly some concern there for Coach Holtz. We thought he was uh, joking with us and trying to build his team down and then build them up at the end of the week. He was joking. He was joking. They'll take over in the second half and win the game. But the thing that shocks me is the fact that this Navy team was shut out by Louisville and Virginia early in the season, and they got 24 points against Notre Dame. That to means to me, psychologically, Notre Dame was not ready to play. And can you imagine what Florida State would have scored? Huh. Well, you know, earlier in the day, I told everybody that this would be a pad game for Notre Dame's players. They'd get motivated through that. Well, they were still thinking pads in this game, but they were thinking about putting pads in their britches because you know Lou Holtz jumped all over them in that locker room. In the first half, Navy had almost 200 yards passing, and that's against a good secondary with Bobby Taylor and Jeff Burris, guys I'm always talking about. Another concern for Notre Dame, penalized eight times for 83 yards, and Navy mm -hmm. hasn't been penalized yet in this game. So Notre Dame hasn't been making, or has been making mistakes, mm -hmm. keeping Navy in it in part. It's a seven-point lead there. To the cocktail party in Jacksonville and a deluge of pouring rain throughout the southeast, but Georgia and Florida, two teams that are living on the pass this year, have been able to put up points at the Gator Bowl, tied to three in the first. Eric Rett, first on the ground, nine yards. Watch him dive for the corner of the end zone. Gators by seven. Watch it again on the replay. And through the slosh and the sloppy, just gets it across the plane. Florida's lead, 13-10 in the second. Mitch Davis intercepts Danny Werfel, who has struggled in this game. Eric Zire makes him pay to Shannon Mitchell on the shovel pass. A great play by Mitchell to fight his way in. 17-13 Georgia. Werfel was pulled. Terry Dean comes in, and after Georgia fumbles a kickoff return late in the half, Florida makes some pay. Terry Dean to Harrison Houston. And at the half, Florida, a 23-20 lead on Georgia as Dean has come in. Zire, the two touchdown passes. The Bulldogs looking to get a win here in the cocktail party against Florida, something they've struggled at over the last three years. In the SEC, Tennessee hosting South Carolina. Also a rainy day in checkerboard paradise. Look at the moves by Charlie Garner. First minute of the game, 60 yards untouched. 7-0 lead for the Vols, Pony. One thing you got to like about Garner and Tennessee's runners is the ability for them to use their vision and their blockers. They allow them to work. Look at the move right there into the secondary. And then, hey, Tennessee, track stars. And then they're running. You also got Heath Schuler going back. Nine yards to Billy Williams to the one. Philip Fulmer decides, hey, let's go for it on fourth down. And James Stewart, up and over the top, gives the balls an 11-point lead. Second quarter, most Phillips, the freshman on the ground, his second, yard, second touchdown of the day. Corey Fleming would catch a score. That tied a school record, as you see, for season touchdowns. All Tennessee pounding Sparky Woods team. Will Sparky be in trouble at South Carolina? The lead, 35 at the break. To the Big East, Miami home after the blowout, 49-0 over Syracuse, facing Temple in the early going, Ryan Collins. Watch the catch by his tight end, Dietrich Clausel. Same drive, it's Collins, 
fakes everyone and says, I'm going to take this one myself. It's one of the reasons Collins is the quarterback. He adds this dimension to the Canes, who take a 7-0 lead. But credit Ron Dickerson's crew. They hang in there. Little razzle-dazzle. Lou Lawhorn had two carries for minus 14 yards this year. Changes all that with this touchdown, and Temple was tied at the end of one. Seven off. Miami says, all right, it's our turn now. Collins on the rollout. A.C. Tellison. Oh, man, all the time. Read a book. There's Tellison in the end zone. He hangs on. 21-7, the Miami advantage at halftime. Collins in the first half, 203 yards passing, two touchdowns, but two interceptions. And Miami has since added another score to take a 21-point lead early third quarter. Also in the Big East at Alumni Stadium, Boston College two touchdowns. The first one a 51-yard Glenn Foley pass, and the Eagles lead too late. Virginia Tech also playing out of conference, hosting East Carolina, and at Lane Stadium, Worsham Field, leading by 11 over the Pirates. Dwayne Thomas, a one-yard touchdown run in this one. As we continue here at halftime, we'll take you to the ACC. A couple of games going on, including Clemson trying to keep their postseason hopes alive, taking on the Terrapins of Maryland. It's halftime in Wisconsin, and the Badgers lead the Wolverines by 10. Don't go away. We'll be back. We continue at halftime in the Southwest Conference, where Texas Tech's coach Spike Dyke said the fat lady's clearing her throat, but she has not yet begun to sing in terms of Texas Tech's postseason hopes. Red Raiders looking to stay alive against the Longhorns in Austin, and it's Bam Morris pushing it in for the touchdown 10-0 Tech in the first quarter, still in the first, and Robert Hall on the run, rolling and finding Lloyd Hill. Hill missed the last game for Tech with a knee injury, a sprained knee. An off week and back in action and looking pretty good. 26 yards there. And how about the connection? One more time, Hall to Hill. Tech up 17-0 in the second quarter. A terrific start for Texas Tech in Austin as they play mid-stages of the second quarter. Longhorns have scored 109 points in their last three games, but the offense not getting it done thus far. To the ACC now. Clemson at home against Maryland. It's scoreless. This is the first possession for the Tigers, and Derek Witherspoon caps a 66-yard drive with a one-yard run. The point blocked on a wet day in Death Valley. 6-0 Clemson. Then the D. Mark Mason fumbles. Clemson with a recovery. Their lead still 6-0 after one. To the second quarter, third and goal for Scott Milanovic. Can't find anyone to throw to. This has been the story for Maryland. They've been able to move the ball somewhat, but haven't been able to punch it in. This is the 1,000th game in school history. Terps, who have won 10 times in Death Valley, trail in the third, 9-0. Georgia Tech looking for a second conference win. Duke looking for a second ACC win. Dorsey Levins, formerly of Notre Dame, the run there, 7-0 Tech. And Duke fumbles on their next possession. Spence Fisher, Robert Baldwin just bang into each other. Bad communication. Yellow Jacket ball, it leads to this. Charlie Simmons over the middle from the Donnie Davis toss. And look at Simmons accelerate through the slot at Wallace Wade Stadium. 73 yards for the score. The extra point here was blocked. Duke trying to come back. Stanley Dorsey fumbles one more time. Turnover's the first half story here. And the interception again. Pays dividends for William Bell. His one-yard run, 21-0 Yellow Jackets leading in the third quarter. Duke going for back-to-back -back ACC wins for the first time since 89. Also in conference, Virginia, after their big win last week, now struggling with NC State in Raleigh, 17-17. Important game for State if they hope to uh, take advantage of Clemson and just stay ahead of them in the race for a postseason bowl bid. Memphis State at Cincinnati, leading by seven. Important game for these two teams, the Independence Bowl scouts on hand to watch these teams. Hey, Ball State, leaders in the MAC, tied with Bowling Green, leading Eastern Michigan by just two. Bristol Green on the ground for a touchdown. And I mentioned Bowling Green. Right now, they trail Miami of Ohio 13-7. The Falcons unbeaten in 20 conference games. Ohio looking for three consecutive wins, leading Akron by 14 as the Bobcats look to go to three and four. And the other game, the Mac Kent, which has the nation's longest winless streak, trailing by 14. Our score at halftime is 13-3 for the Badgers. Terrell Fletcher, the 12-yard touchdown run in the last couple of minutes, adding seven for the Badgers. Halftime in Madison, Wisconsin. The hometown Badgers in front of the Wolverines of Michigan, 13-3. Welcome back to Madtown, everybody. Brad Nessler and Gary Danielson. Been a mad first half, I guess, if you're a Michigan fan, Gary. Total domination, really, by Wisconsin. At one point, they had an edge in total plays 35 to 6. Uh, it had to be an embarrassment for the Michigan football team. They're not used to being pushed around like this. I wouldn't want to be in their locker room at halftime 
Wisconsin has dominated the line of scrimmage with help from their fullback, Montmont Mark Montgomery. They've been able to run the ball inside when they want to, and they do it with a lot of different blocking schemes. You're going to look at Montgomery come from the right side of the screen this time, and he's going to clean up on Jason Horn, the middle nose guard. You see Fletcher just run behind that block, and that's how they've been able to get to the linebackers and run and keep Michigan off balance. And really is unbelievable how they've attacked this Michigan football team. Got a little bit of a graphic for you here where they've run the ball. Chief Fletcher and Moss have been able to put some big yards up on the play right here. And they've been able to do it right, left, and in the middle too. And that's been the key to this football team. Their offensive line being able to dominate Michigan's defensive line and just run wherever they want to run the ball, Brad. Barry Alvarez said we got to get physical with Michigan to establish the tempo. I think the first two quarters was a serious tempo establisher <laughs> for the Wisconsin Badgers leading 13 to 3 and they'll get the football first as well to start the second half having won the toss at the beginning and uh, deferred and kicked off. And as Gary said you probably wouldn't want to be a fly on the wall in the Michigan locker room at halftime after the way things went the first 30 minutes. Well, you know, Michigan's just not used to being pushed around the field right. like that. There's a lot of tradition. These guys have a lot of pride in them. They all were highly recruited. I mean, they were talking national championship at the beginning of this football season. Then with injuries, and now with Wheatley out, they just are missing right now. Carl McCulloch back with Terrell Fletcher. Deep for Wisconsin. Remy Hamilton's kick. McCulloch five yards deep will not bring it out. Statistically, as you might guess, with one team leading, that they're going to have a little bit of an edge. But quite frankly, Michigan's lucky not to be down by more than 10 points when you look at these numbers. Yeah, and I think the one that really jumps out at you is Michigan's rushing yardage, only 10 yards. And usually you can factor in some sacks on that type of a play, but Michigan is not allowed a sack. Those 10 actual yards rushing. Wisconsin is pushing Michigan all over the football field. Wisconsin came into this game averaging over eight minutes per game more time of possession wise so when you add that up basically their offense has played almost a game more this season than their defense has had to absolutely that's that's how you roll up those stats first down Fletcher a big hole again Fletcher into the secondary Terrell Fletcher one man to beat up to the 41 from number 41 well, Brett Moss gets two series Terrell Fletcher gets two series this is his second go around <laughs> I'll tell you, it's taken that long. And if he would have had a little more com uh, confidence in Lee DeRamus that time, big block by Montgomery inside. Now watch, he's got Lee DeRamus blocking downfield this time. If he'd have cut to the outside, knocking down Ty Law and Alfie Birch goes to cut, cut down, he'd have had a touchdown. Right up the middle again. This time Montgomery takes it inside the 40 to the 39. Steve Rakowski and Bobby Powers combined on the hit. And, and obviously, Brad, uh, you know, Steve Morrison is just not healthy enough to be playing full time. His leg, we saw it early on that drop as we took it to, you know, the yardage in this game. It, they are just not healthy at inside linebacker. The bad news for Michigan, this is the quarter when Wisconsin tends to get warmed up, as you saw those stats. Second down nine. Bevel. Doremus had his hands on it, but got hammered from behind by Alfie Birch incomplete. Let's go to Charlene Hawks. Brad, moments ago I talked with Barry Alvarez, and he said the thing he was most impressed with is that his team was able to keep Michigan offense off the field, keep the Wisconsin defense off the field, and he was pleased with his offense in being able to convert the third down, the third downs. By the way, on the kicker, Rick Zelensky, yesterday he didn't know his first name. Today he said his name is Rick, and we're going to build a statue for him. <laughs> He's warming up again. Ricky Schnetzky, two for two today, is a brand new Wisconsin kick, kicker. And there's the third down conversion so far that Charlene was talking about. Have to get almost all of this, third and nine. And pressure coming on Bevel. Completes it, but it'll be only about a three yard gain to Doremus. Bevel checking the right thumb. Yeah, that. That time, Tony Henderson or, or Buster Stanley, one of the two of them, came from the outside of the pocket and flushed him. 
couple plays ago when he was throwing down the field, you can see when he hit, it looked like Rakowski or maybe even Joe Rudolph, his home own guy, and that's usually when that happened. It was a few plays earlier that he threw the ball, and when it's cold, that sparks. This is the first Wisconsin punt of the day. Remember, Montgomery's the up back. White to punt. Wisconsin trying to run under it, and everything's going well today. J.C. Dawkins downs it inside the two. 31-yard punt. The Wolverines on offense in a big hole when we come back. Same kind of guy that would buy a Howard Stern autobiography out on <laughs> Lake Mendota today. It's about 35 degrees, and the wind's blowing like crazy. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, Charlene Hawks. Michigan met at the line of scrimmage, spinning off and giving a couple yards, though. As Yusef Burgess put the hit on John Ritchie, but he fell forward to the four-yard line, maybe the five. John Ritchie, a highly sought-after freshman coming in here who really put up some outstanding numbers and uh, rated the number one fullback coming out in high school football last year. And he and Che Foster are the two fullbacks that alternate in there for the Michigan offense. Give him three, second down and seven, and you see what Ricky Powers, Todd Collins, and company have to look at. Powers and the Michigan end zone gets the call. Maybe a yard. First carry of the day by a guy that we thought really would have to carry a good portion of the offensive load for Michigan. Well, it's got to be tough on him. And as a captain, he, he knows he has to come through for a football team like that. And, you know, he played some great football here at, at Michigan. And I know he's dying for a chance to make up for that fumble at the end of the Illinois game. I don't know what's in the back of that jersey. I think he may have taken an egg instead of a marshmallow. <laughs> Third down at six. And again, Collins now backed up in the student section. Having some trouble here. Play action. Fires it out wide open. Walter Smith. Now that's her second catch of the day. Both of them have been good for first downs. That was a great read that time by Todd Collins. Reggie Holt, the strong safety, tried to hold off and bait Collins into throwing the curl to Derek Alexander. Collins picked the right guy. Watch, he comes out right here. He tries to go to Alexander, holds inside on the curl, so he dumps it out to his wide receiver for the first down. Reggie Holt with a hit at the end of the play. First down, Michigan, though. And it's on 20 yard line. Hayes in motion. Out to the nine-yard line. Nice gain on the play. You really saw Ricky Powers wrapping his arms around that football. And for those of you that don't know the story about a week ago, Michigan against Illinois was in the late stages of the ball game. Final minute, just trying to run the clock out. And Ricky Powers fumbled last week. And there's still some speculation that maybe Michigan could have won that game by just taking a knee a few times, three times in a row, and going home with a win. Instead, Powers fumbled. Illinois came back. Johnny Johnson with a miraculous touchdown, and Illinois with the upset. So that's a story from a week ago. I think it shows in Powers in the way he's carrying the ball today. Tackled by Eric and I think that when you can make plays like Ricky Powers did last play where he was falling forward and pushing people back and you come up lining up second and one, second and two, that's what they're going to do, build a drive and put a drive together, take some time off the clock to keep their defense off the field. And if they can get a field goal or a touchdown to get back in the football game. Yeah, that last run by Powers was the longest gain of the day on the ground by Michigan. Third and a yard. Powers cuts outside. And he's out to the 36-yard line. First down Michigan. We talked about Ricky Powers and the troubles of a week ago, something he has to shake off. Here it was with 1.20 left last week. And Powers had it stripped right there. Yeah, Simeon Rice is the guy who made the play. You can see it a minute and 20 to go when that play was called. A lot of people question it, but you know, it would have been close, and you can go back and recreate it and try to figure it out. But it doesn't no help you when you're on the sideline. No, it, it, no matter what, it, it's a fumble that shouldn't have happened, and I'm sure Ricky is appreciating the opportunity to carry the ball right now. He's carrying it well on this drive. Richie, the fullback in front of Powers. Play action, Collins. And he's got Mercury Hayes. 
Hayes knocked out as he crossed the 41. That's his first catch of the day. Reggie Holt knocked him out of bounds. Mercury Hayes, one of the greatest names really in college football, I guess. His dad, Richard, and his uh, mom, Joanne, she said she was when he was born, she was just uh, thinking, you know, Mars, Jupiter. I like Mercury. <laughs> and he almost arrived a little too quickly as he was starting to be delivered in the uh, parking lot of the Houston Hospital where he grew up. Mercury Hayes. Second down four. Bowers cuts back. Broke a tackle. He's got a first down. Scott Nelson finally brings him down, but Ricky Powers showing some nice moves and some power, and he got it out near the 48-49 yard line. Michigan, or rather Wisconsin, opened up with a long drive. Ricky Schnetzky, a 25-yard field goal, his first as a Badger. He added a 26-yarder, capping a 21-play drive, 6-0. And then Elizabeth, after the long pass, from Collins to Amani Toomer, made it 6-3, and then Terrell Fletcher right before the end of the second quarter, a 12-yard touchdown. That's where we stand at 13-3. Collins, pressure from the backside, almost intercepted by Burgess. Yusef had his hands on it. Incomplete. I'm sure that was his primary receiver that time, and he threw a fairly good pass. Burgess made a nice catch on it. Coming back, he checks his safeties to make sure he doesn't have a safety blitz. Delivers the ball. Burgess just runs underneath it and almost comes up with the play. But streaking down the left sideline was Derek Alexander. He had beaten his man cleanly. I wonder if Cam Cameron or and Gary Moeller can work that out and get the ball to Derek Alexander. He was wide open. We talk about some guys that have made themselves players. Burgess is another one. Had to sit behind some great inside linebackers here, and now as a senior, he's one of the leaders. Michigan started at their own two-yard line. This is the tenth play of the drive. Collins completes it. Down to the 35-yard line. Walter Smith again. Yeah, big time throw that time. They had the tight end, the short man covered. They had the crossing tight end covered, so he had to go downfield, and Todd Collins made a dead-on throw, dead running to his right. Very good throw. Watch it as he fakes out. Both tight ends will be covered, Burkhalter and Cooper, and you see Walter Smith come open, and he makes a perfect throw. Collins made a throw like that to Toomer in the first half. You think because he's such a big guy, 6'5", about 230, that he can't move out there. That was, as you said, looked great on that play. Great drive by Michigan here. That's what they needed to do to get back in the game. At the Wisconsin 35, trailing by 10. Powers on a sweep. Got the corner around the hole, and he got about six yards before he's taken out of bounds inside the Wisconsin 30. Take a look at some scores, ACC. In the East and elsewhere around college football today. We're under nine minutes here in the third quarter at Camp Randall Stadium. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, and Charlene Hawks with you. Brad, you know, I think when you have a Ty Wheatley, and, it, and it's not anyone's fault, but subconsciously you, you kind of stand around waiting for Wheatley to make a big play. Right now, this to me is a typical Michigan drive. The run and the pass mix, but look at second and four. That's how you create drives. Tyrone Wheatley sitting back watching this game in Ann Arbor. Second and four. Counter. There's an opening for Davis. Closed quickly thanks to Mike Thompson, but he got a first down anyway inside the 25. By generating good first down runs, Wisconsin now had to come up and blitz on that play, and that opened up the play for another big down running down. Now this looks like Michigan football of yesteryear a little well, bit more. Well, I think he's still mixing in the pass when he needs to, it, it, but it's not a dominating pass. He came out quick screen on the first play. Second play was a kind of a counter play, and they really got off sync, and they really not get into their game plan. This, to me, looks like what they have to do versus the Wisconsin defense. They have really had to work for it. Just over three per carry. But that average is up to 3.2 thanks to this drive. Otherwise, it would have been a much more anemic number. Davis, Holt, Reggie Holt's got about three tackles this drive alone, and that may not be a good sign when you start thinking about your safeties having to make stops, but he is the strong safety. Got a hit after a gain of five. 
Michigan seems to have found a formation that is giving Wisconsin a little bit of trouble as we look at Reggie Holt right there, the strong safety. They're sending both wide receivers to one side in a twin look, kind of walks off the linebacker, and they're either running right at it or throwing that play-action pass to either Walter Smith or Derek Alexander on the curl. Both Reeds have five first downs this drive. That matches the first half total. Second down and six right at the Wisconsin 20. Going to have to hustle to get the snap. And did. Collins, a quick one to Toomer. And he is going to be short of the first down by about a yard as we go to Mike Tarico. Brad, number two, Notre Dame now leads 45-27 over Navy. As for number one, Florida State handed off to Warwick Dunn. The freshman who Craig is so high on. 58-yard run. He'll fumble it, but Florida State will get it back. William Floyd punched it in from a yard out. And the Seminoles by 10. 13-3 Wisconsin. But Michigan threatening here. The midway point of the third quarter. Big third down and two. Powers. I think he got it, but it will depend on the spot, and it may take a measurement. Yeah, it, it looks like he fell across. The first down is just across the line, and it's going to be very close, but I think he got it, too. Eric Unverzat makes the tackle, but he got him in those short yardage situations. You can't tackle people around the legs. They'll fall forward and make the first down, and that's what happened on that play. And if they're going to bring out the change, let's yeah. see if they've got him tangled. Nope, they've cleared everybody <laughs> out. Here comes the measurement. They, they did not appear to get a great spot on this play either. It, it appeared that Ricky Powers was clearly across that line. If we can get Jeff Messenger to take a right. There we go. We got a different look. And oh boy, we're going to have to look real close. Tom Quinn's on his hands and knees. First down, Michigan. Big drive by Michigan, and they've done it by going back to running the ball from the tailback position. Got to feel good for the captain, Ricky yep. Powers, who's had a great drive here. And Michigan's held the ball six minutes on this drive and worked it to the 15-yard line of the Badgers. There's a look at the drive. Six fifty-five and the clock winding, third quarter. And again, John Ritchie's got to come up to say to Todd Collins, what's the count? And I can't hear you. And now they're down to five seconds again on the 25 second clock powers ball loose was it blown dead no I don't nope, think Wisconsin so. second turnover an interception to end the half and now a fumble recovery by Kenny Gales Badgers have it back and we'll have it on offense when we come back. If you're tired of those automobiles that isolate, insulate, and virtually remove you from the outside world, may we recommend the new Defender from Land Rover. It can make life a bit more exciting. of the original. In the year 23,012 BC, Lenny, the traveling salesman, rented the first big round wheel from Thrifty at a nice small rate. Today, Thrifty Car Rentals still offers historically low rates and now are nice big cars with four wheels. Simply check your phone book for the Thrifty location nearest you. Renting wheels at low prices is nothing new to Thrifty. In fact, we invented it. Thrifty Car Rental, historically known for low rates. I think you call this one Deja Blue. Ricky Powers has just fumbled to give the ball back to Wisconsin. 
taking a look at it, number 98, Yusef Burgess right here is the guy who gets his hand on the football. You see Ricky Powers trying to protect it, puts his hand on it, but it was a not a dynamic hit. It's something that he should have had, and Kenny Gales came up with the public recovery. You gotta feel for him. I mean, it, it's a it's a tough game, and at that point, you know the whole world is watching you, especially when you're the captain of the football team in your senior year. Wisconsin takes over at its own 13-yard line. Montgomery broke the tackle, worked it out across the 15 to the 17. Shante Peoples with the stop. I mean, there's as pretty a drive as you could ever have for Michigan. You could feel their emotions rising and saying, we finally turned the corner in this football game. And all of a sudden, Wisconsin's got the football again. It's Lloyd Carr in the center of your screen, defensive coordinator. Run defense, giving up 125 a game, and it's going to be a lot worse than that when this one's over, regardless of what Wisconsin does the rest of the way. That little sprint draw to Brent Moss in this one is going nowhere, but we'll go to Mike Tirico. Mike. I will take you right back to Tallahassee. Wake Bar is down 10-0. They get the ball back. And Kemp is picked by Clifton Abraham for the touchdown. Fourth interception touchdown for Florida State this year. They lead by 17. First quarter not even done yet. Too bad Florida State can't find some kids to play cornerback down there. You, you know? know, you like to watch them play, but if they show to the play every time Florida State score, we wouldn't be able to do our game. <laughs> Third down, four. Wisconsin has been unsuccessful on its last three third downs. Oh, they almost threw one to Jared Irons. He had it and dropped it. And it will be a punting situation for the Badgers. Well, it's nice to see that Michigan has learned that Bevel's going to go short on third and short because this time the linebackers did not drop deep. Look, and he's standing right there. He sees Bevel. He knows he's going to go to Roan and makes the play. They had got away with that in the first half. This time, Irons gets smart, moves up, and makes a great football play. Sam White will punt. That was a great three and out for the Michigan defense. They're going to have the ball in great field position again. He's going to have to watch out for Derek Alexander back. He's got a punt return for a touchdown to his credit already this year. That against Penn State. Mike lofts one up. Gutsy move to make the catch without a fair catch and dropped in his tracks by Vince Zullo. 38-yard kick, two-yard return. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to Madison, Wisconsin. And as the Wisconsin defense takes the field, no one can appreciate their performance better than Gary Casper, last year's captain. And he broke Tim Cronenweiss' all-time career tackling record last year. And uh, you've been able to watch this turnaround happen. You were here a year before Barry Alvarez. What's that been like? Well, you know, it was a, it was a tough transition at, per, at first, but, you know, Barry instilled in us to, to compete, you know, on the field at a Big Ten level. And, you know, we did that. And we, it was a slow turnaround. It took us a couple of years, but now we're really in the swing of things. And uh, the defense is going good, and along with the offense, complement them real well. And, and uh, you know, basically the offense has been keeping them off the field more than in the past. So. I remember playing 95 plays in a couple of games, and that's a lot of plays. And it's important that the offense keeps them off the field, so they're doing a great job this year. Who has who has come through this year? Probably maybe it's surprising you a little bit. Oh, well, you know, uh, Bell was having a great year, and and uh, Moss, the offense in general, is having a real good year. Mark's really coming to his own, and on defense, Yusef and Shaq's just just taking it to another level, and and that's what they had to do coming in this year, and they knew what they had to do, and, and they've done it so far. All right, well, you're in between the professional teams, and we wish you good luck. It's good to see you again, guys. Casper, the friendly linebacker. He was a good one. First down on the pass to Tumor, and now Davis. He's got a first down run. An 11-yard pass play to Tumor, now an 11-yard pickup. Make it 12 for Ed Davis. And here comes Michigan. Yeah, here comes Michigan's offensive line. They've gained some confidence running it right at. I bet the offensive lineman at halftime and said, let's go at these guys. Let's show we can run the ball. Tough for that man right there, but uh, I'm sure he's pulling for his teammates right now. They need to win this game badly. They got up to some points on the board. Draw play, Davis. Broke a tackle or two and actually spun his way to a couple yard gain. Notre Dame now rolling it up against Navy as they had their hands full throughout. A couple big 
big games in the SEC. Georgia and Florida having fun at the world's largest outdoor cocktail party down at Jacksonville. This one might not be a cocktail party, but there's been some uh, other beverages <laughs> consumed out here. <laughs> Something to keep you from freezing to death. Second and eight. Davis. Into Yusef Burgess, one of the guys that Gary Casper talked about a couple minutes ago, who's come on this year and provided leadership. And uh, another tackle by the senior out of the Bronx. Again, linebackers make plays when the defensive linemen up front push and and consume offensive linemen. That time, Lamar Shackerford just ate up the center and allowed Burgess to come up and make the play. When Shackerford's putting some penetration across there, this Wisconsin defense is very good. Middle of your screen, watch Shackerford take on a player and just push, 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 force Davis back into the linebacker, and that's good nose tackle play by number 62, the all Big Ten player at nose tackle, Lamar Shackerford. As Gary mentioned, all Big Ten at the nose guard spot, and Tim Crumry, who Charlene mentioned a couple of minutes ago, He's the last guy to play the nose guard spot that was all Big Ten for Wisconsin. Brad, what's, a, what's amazing as a, we take a peek at the, the injured player right there is that a Barry Alvarez's first recruiting class when he came here, he only had three weeks to recruit. He recruited 24 players. 11 of those 24 players are starting for this team right here. Shows you, you just don't have to have those big name guys to win. Exactly. They don't all have to be parade All-Americans to become all Big Ten performers. And that guy was the last of that class. That was one he didn't want <laughs> until someone else said no to Barry Alvarez. Rod Payne has come into play center with Mark Billy out with the injury. There he is, 52. He'll get over the ball at the 32-yard line of Wisconsin. Third down and nine, Michigan. Smith in motion. He's been big to pick up first down so far today. Collins goes intended for Tumor, broken up by Donnie Brady, the cornerback. Threw that one slightly behind that time. And allowed Brady to come and make the play. Coming from the outside, the right side of your screen, he gets a little bit of pressure, and that forced that pass to be slightly behind. You see Toomer try to come back and make the play, or that would have been a touchdown. And now Michigan will probably go for it on fourth down and nine, because quite frankly, their kicker doesn't have this much leg, and a punt doesn't do them that much good. So this is not a major gamble, but it is fourth down and nine. Toomer hustle over to the near side. Five seconds left on the clock. They're going to have to hurry to get the playoff, and Collins will take a timeout. He was down to two seconds, as you see, in the left corner of the screen. That's a situation on fourth down, though, you somewhat can understand. You've got a lot of guys thinking it might be punt and, and trying to get in the right uh, position. Michigan, fourth and nine. First and goal, 25 yards, Collins to Burkholder, first catch by a tight end today. Collins is really cool in the pocket and give the credit to the offensive line. Wisconsin had been blitzing on most of these situations. This time they dropped into a zone and the front line gave Collins time to step into his throw and he throws a strike down to the tight end right down the middle of the zone. Not only the first catch for Burkholder today, first catch in four games for him. First and goal at the seven, Michigan, trailing by 10. Davis, not much. Mike Thompson, Eric Unverzat, they're both there. Shackerford doing a little bit of talking with Rod Payne's center. Unverzat, sophomore, 6'2", 225. Michigan with an impressive drive, though. This is the eighth play coming up. They started with their best field position of the day, and now they've worked it down to the Wisconsin seven-yard line. Second and goal. Three tight end set. Play fake. Collins lofts it for Alexander. Touchdown, Michigan. They took 
a while to get Alexander involved in the offense, but that is the way you want to do it in the back of the end zone. He has been the clutch performer for the Michigan offense, but give the credit also to Todd Collins. They played in and out coverage on him that time. He could not throw a hard strike on the slant pass, and he just waited for him to clear and just lofted it to the back of the end zone. Very good execution. Elizabeth in for the point after to try to make it a field goal difference here. And he does with two minutes and six seconds remaining in the third quarter. Todd Collins hooks up to number one, Derek Alexander. And it's Wisconsin 13, Michigan 10. A little bit of a play fake to hold the linebackers, and he's going to be looking all the way right. He's only got a one-man route, really, for Alexander. He sees the strong safety sit there and just puts a nice touch on it. Watch to the back of the end zone. You're going to see number 37 standing right in the throwing lane, and Collins just puts a little touch on it right to the back of the end zone. Derek Alexander's 22nd career touchdown reception. And for Todd Collins, that's his... Uh, 14th touchdown pass of the year. His 13th touchdown pass of the year. But you really get the feeling that while Wisconsin was congratulating themselves on a great first half and what they did in the first half, Michigan was in there taking a little bit of a tongue lashing and deciding we're going to go out and play smash mouth football ourselves and try to turn this game around. This will be the biggest drive of the game for Wisconsin. They need to punch out a few first downs. Their defense is off balance now. Carl McCulloch and Terrell Fletcher back deep. Await the kick. McCulloch from the four. Boy, he took a hit as he hit the 20. He got it out maybe to the 22-yard line. And we go to Charlene. Brad, with all the pressure that Wisconsin is uh, putting in the face of Todd Collins, he's been showing a lot of points. And he told me earlier that when he was in Bob Borderly, he picked up a book called The Art of Quarterbacking by Ken Anderson. And he still reads it quite often, especially when he needs motivation. But the best piece of advice that he got out of that book was to keep an even keel. And he said that he takes a lot of pride in being that kind of a quarterback. He's had some... Tremendous games, hasn't started that many ball games really, but he has five of the top 13 single game passing marks in Michigan history. He's learned well, I guess, from Ken Anderson's book. There's what Gary talked about. Moss with a tough run, got almost eight to the 30. That Wisconsin needs to go back what got him here in the first half. Well, Gary. one of the things that got him here is Corey Raymer's back in at center, and they're going to start running the football behind him. We, he had the migraines, and he, and he probably isn't feeling 100% right now, but this is just too big of a football game because when you're staring Ohio State coming up next, and then Illinois might be playing as good a football as anyone. Wisconsin needs this football game. Second down. Long two, the 30 yard line. Michigan jumps, Buster Stanley got in that neutral zone and that should give Wisconsin an automatic first down. I don't think he was drawn offside. Great agility though. He did a little two-step <laughs> in that gap, didn't he? Dead ball, defensive contact, five yard penalty. First down, Wisconsin. Buster Stanley, one of the captains for the Michigan team, and those of us who followed Michigan football a long time know what an honor it is to be a captain of the Michigan football team, and they rely on him to provide the senior leadership. Now to a minute 10 left third quarter. Wisconsin clinging to a three-point lead, and a first down from the 35. Draw play Moss, and Moss a tough three up the middle. Don't forget at the conclusion of our game, we'll be choosing our Kelly Springfield players of the game. Gary and I will select an outstanding performer from each team on behalf of the Kelly Springfield Tire Company. Well, Michigan has tried Steve Morrison. They've tried Gannon Dudler as inside linebacker, but they've gone back now to Bobby Powers and Jared Irons, and that seems to be the freshest and best chance they have of stopping the running game. On a second and seven. Wisconsin from its own 38. Play action, here comes pressure. 
Ball loose, and they're going to say it was a forward pass. Matt Dyson got a big hand on there, and they need him. As Gary said, you know he can pressure the quarterback. The question is, can he play in a dropback situation? This one, he just dropped back on Bevel. Matt Dyson is the guy they expect to get pressure from the outside quarter. He beats Bertsagen this time. You see the arm is going forward just as he hits him in the elbow. Dyson has been playing all year with that bad calf and knee muscle, so he calf muscle and knee and uh, you know when you're playing less than 100 percent it's a tough game Here's first team all big 10 last year he'll be coming again third down and seven and wisconsin's hit a drop now oh for their last four on third down conversions bevel will go down again stanley's got him the momentum has really changed in this football game, and it really started with that long drive Michigan had prior to the Ricky Powers fumble. They seem to have taken charge in the line of scrimmage, and Wisconsin's having a tough time getting it back. Barry Alvarez and his troops will be able to talk about it here because three quarters have gone by in Madison. Gary Moeller trying to get a timeout before the end of the quarter. I, I don't get it. I don't think he got it in nope. time. Michigan timeout, two seconds on the clock. He two did get it. Number 22. The clock is kept officially on the field, keep in mind. Pretty good strategy. They're going to have to punt into the wind, and that's a big advantage. The only thing I wonder about it, did they not use one earlier in this half? They're down to one timeout. Yeah, in, in the pro game, I would think that'd be a, a, a tough call. But in college, that last drive, the clock stops so often with a first down. I think this is a valuable play by Gary Moeller. All right. Third down coverage of the 1993 PGA Tour Championship coming up 4 o'clock today. Here's top 30 money winners. Play for the Tour's richest purse, 3 million bucks. Paul Azinger won it a year ago. He's battling Nick Price in the points and money standings. But Jim Gallagher set a course record 63 Thursday and enters play today as the co-leader with David Frost. 4 o'clock this afternoon, Eastern Time, live from the Olympic Club in San Francisco. Well, it's not a day you could golf, but the sun's out in Madison, Wisconsin. Oh, I don't know. Well, you're crazy. You're closer <laughs> to the heater than I am, too, though. Packed house at Camp Randall Stadium, about 78,000 fans. Indiana leads Michigan State early, as you see some other scores from around the Big Ten, and Northwestern leading Illinois. Iowa and Purdue. And here it is, 13 to 10. Wisconsin leads Michigan with one play left in the third quarter. In the fourth quarter, Miami 35, Temple 7. Sam Vite is 30. trotting back, set to punt for Barry Alvarez Badgers. And again, Derek Alexander made a gutsy catch without a fair catch call last time. But you want to get down and cover number one. He's got three career punt returns for touchdowns. This one at the 33. Given some ground to try to get some ground. And he loses that battle. Nice job defensively as Jeff Worth, backup running back, forced him deep and finally out of bounds. Minus four on that return. We'll return for the fourth quarter. In just a moment, it's Wisconsin by three. Gary Danielson and Charlene Hawks. I'm Brad Nessler. Camp Randall Stadium in Madison set to start the fourth quarter. Michigan trailing Wisconsin by three. First down from its own 33. And Ed Davis across the 35 to the 37. Carlos Fowler in on the stop along with Eric Unverstadt. The real difference in this football game, everyone's going to say, now how did Michigan's line get so so good at halftime? You know, what did they have, a spike Gatorade or something? <laughs> really, it's the type of plays they're calling, taking advantage of some straight-on blocking. They're rotating their guard. They're horning their guards, what they call. They read the linebacker and run around the tackle or the center, and they're starting to block some real man-to-man -man -man plays. Second and five. Walter Smith, the motion man. Nice play fake by Collins. Wants to throw to his tight end. No. Yes, he does. Across the middle. Burke Holder across midfield. Boy, did he beat Reggie Hold head on. Yeah, he, he met him, but he met him 20 yards downfield. And that's a big time hit, but when you pick up 20 yards on a little play action pass. Flag in the middle of the field. Perfectly thrown ball again on the run to Burke Holder. Boop. <laughs> Pretty good hit. Put it in reverse fast, didn't he? 
There is a flag down, as we said, near where the play ended. Got a clip? Yep. Damon Jones, I think, was out in that vicinity. Five ball foul. Clipping. Spot foul. 15 yard penalty. We'll repeat second down. I think it's Rod Payne, number 52, that gets Thompson here. Oh, yeah. Tries to get his head across. Thompson turns around. You see, Mick gives the point. If he had a flag, he'd have thrown it right there, too. Rod Payne, the freshman, playing for Amelia, who is out again. And then you wonder about that neck for Amelia. It came in. He missed a couple games. Payne's coming from uh, Florida, started the Michigan State, and played a lot in the Iowa game that we did before. So instead of a first down, way down in uh, Wisconsin land, it's back to second and five again at the 38. Collins, Davis, short of the first down. Shackerford got out from his nose guard spot to make the hit a couple yards short of the first down marker. I'll tell you, Rod Payne, uh, he gets a clipping penalty. He's not shy about going downfield and blocking it after the catch because he just was down there flying again. The freshman who they feel is going to be a great player. Watch, he blocks. Guy's got the ball. Here comes Payne. Dive over the pothole and hit somebody right there. <laughs> That's great effort. That's what really spurs the enthusiasm. Third down at two, Michigan. With Alexander out here. Davis cuts it outside. He's got a first down. To midfield goes Ed Davis. In fact, to the 49 of Wisconsin. Goes the sophomore out of Detroit. Ed Davis from Martin Luther King High School came in averaging five and a half yards a carry, and he has the speed. He was a 60-meter tack champion in high school coming out of Martin Luther King. That's why he can get around the corner like that. 39 yards for him today on 12 carries, yeah. so a little over three per pop, but that was a big one there to pick up a first down. You know, you, there's no embarrassment playing behind Ty Wheatley, but this guy's a great football player, too. First and ten. Michigan Wolverines trailing by three. We're under 13 minutes here in Madison in a big Big Ten game for these two clubs. Nice cutback by Davis. Ran into Umbrazad again. Again, a big drive. We're 12 minutes to go here in the fourth period, and you get... You can almost feel the tension with the crowd right here in the, in, in the stadium right now. They, They're kind of holding their breath. At halftime, they were trying to figure out what bowl game they were going to. <laughs> now in the third, fourth quarter here, they're just hoping to hang on. Second down, seven. Brad, I don't think 13 points is going to be enough for Wisconsin. They're going to have to score some more touchdowns. Davis got a nice block, cut back to the 41. Scott Nelson in on the tackle. Rod Payne doing a good job substituting. We've seen both backup centers this time. This time he's going to get a push. It's Lee Kruger, the backup nose tackle. That's fair. If you don't have to start your center, we'll put our backup nose tackle in. Pushes him by the play, and as you said, a nice cutback by Davis. But look at the difference here, Brad. In the first half, it was third and long all day. Now it's third and two. At the 41 of Wisconsin. Kenny Gale's out there all by himself on Derek, Derek Alexander with an eight, almost nine-man front. And that's got to make you a little bit nervous as a cornerback. And there they go. Alexander's got it. First down onto the 32-yard line. It's one of those things, you know, Kenny Gales just does not feel confident matching up man-to-man. -man. Uh, and, and who can? You know, Derek Alexander is probably as good as you get in the Big Ten. He and I think Joey Galloway are the two top receivers in the Big Ten. And, you know, that type of throw was good execution. And Derek Alexander came up with the, with the catch. By the way, Alexander does not have that much hair here today. He, he shaved one more time after that picture. <laughs> Sprained his ankle on the first catch of the season in the opener and then missed some action. But boy, when he comes back and he has, it's with a vengeance. Last week, career highs and catches and yards. That was a first down grab there. 
Collins will keep this one. And Fowler will drag him out of bounds. It's about the first play that has not worked for Michigan in the second half of this game. Uh, good stay home defense. And as you watch the Wisconsin defense walk back to their play, you can see they're out of gas here. That's why Shackford had to go out. They played a lot of plays. And this year, they're not used to playing that many plays in a game. They're used to dominating the time of possession in every football game. And they had in the first half, but the second half's been a different story. Second and 13. Looks like they're going to blitz again. Here they come. Collins got rid of it. Alexander intercepted by Messenger. Moeller wants a pass interference call. He might have a complaint. Messenger is fifth interception of the season. This group doesn't need much of a reason to celebrate and party, but Jeff Messenger has just given them another reason with an interception that's turned it back to the Wisconsin offense with less than 11 minutes to go. Bevel on the bootleg. Flags are down as he goes to Montgomery. Montgomery to the 23-yard line. They're going to call holding on Trevor Price that time on Montgomery. Good call, Gary. I'm sure everybody wants to see that last interception one more time. A couple things right here. First, the pressure on Todd Collins to begin with. This is a breakdown in protection. Hine comes clean. Collins tries to float the ball up in the air. Now, Jeff Messenger and Derek Alexander. Messenger puts his hand back there, and I think if he had not come up with the interception, they probably would have called pass interference on that play. Gary Moeller's got a good complaint on that one. Well, Jeff probably looked at the Michigan sideline and said, don't shoot me, I'm only the messenger. <laughs> Fifth hey. interception. That's his seventh interception in the last 10 games, Messenger. And, and really, the, the other factor on that play is Collins threw that Holding. ball pretty well. You're in the pass. 10-yard penalty, previous spot, first down. And the wind took it. Both Derek's Alexander and Jeff Messenger were fooled on the play because they both overran it when it was up in the air. And there's Jeff Messenger, former Wisconsin Player of the Year, a junior out of Marinette, Wisconsin. First and 10 on the holding call, out to the 27-yard line. Wisconsin has only three first downs this half, and that one comes by penalty. And Terrell Fletcher, a yard or so. Tony Henderson hit him low, knocked him off his feet. Michigan is really gambling now. They're moving their linebackers up close to the line of scrimmage. They're stunting up front. You can see the life in their legs right now. Buster Stanley, Tony Henderson, a whole front group right now seem alive. Second down and eight coming up. Gary Moeller still talking it over with the officials, and you know it's that interception that he's still chatting about. Yeah, but he, he's also working on the next one, too, Brad. Yeah, that's true. Two tight ends set for the Badgers. That's Nyquist in motion, one of them. Bevel pressured, and he got it complete. Lee DeRamis, I think he's a little bit short of the first down. Storyline of this one. Michigan has gotten into Wisconsin territory and then seen some turnovers. Amani Toomer close to 100 yards catching the ball. And Michigan, it's points on the first three possessions. 13 points, not 17. On the first three possessions, including a couple of field goals. Why don't you say it? Ricky Schnetzky, I love saying it. <laughs> Couple chain links shy. Let's go to Charlene Hawks. Brad, Michigan Steve Morrison is out for the game with a sore left foot. This is the same foot that he broke about a month and a half ago and he was hoping so desperately to recover from in order to play today. Also, as you mentioned earlier, uh, Mark Millia is out with a shoulder injury. It has nothing to do with the pinched nerve in his neck that he uh, sustained. He was out for a couple weeks and uh, thought that he might not be able to play again. But this time it's a shoulder injury and they're still observing it right now. All right, Charlene, thanks. Nine and a half left. There's Millie on the sideline. This is maybe the biggest third down in about 
two inches that Wisconsin has had all season long. And Bevel lost the ball, covered it, but lost yardage with the cover. It's going to be fourth and about a yard and a half now. Bobby Powers came flying in there. And oh boy, Barry Alvarez just talking about the spot. You heard him. I don't think he's going to get. He never got the ball cleanly that time. Bobby Powers, you're right, came in and raked it. And I, I'm really surprised he was able to get back on that football. There was no back behind him. And they're going to be forced to punt the football again to Michigan. We said it was a huge third in inches. They missed on a third down conversion for the sixth straight time. And they got a punt. Boy. And you don't keep punting to this guy without having oh. trouble sometimes. Hold it. There's a football on the field. <laughs> <laughs> More than one is actually what we have there. Yeah, Get like, that thing out of here. It's like the relief pitcher, you know. <laughs> that one came in from the bullpen. So now we're back to Sam Veit <laughs> setting up to punt. <laughs> haven't seen a lot of that, have we? No, not really. Fourth down and two. Low snap. Swarmed on. He might have dropped that one also after he picked it up. Great play by Vite. And Derek Alexander knows how important it is to pick it up. And he makes a real clutch play to save a lot of yards. Sam Vite on the sideline, academic. All Big Ten just pulled off one of the smarter moves. Gary says there's a reason he put his sweatpants on that we're not going to talk about. <laughs> because uh, he just had a harrowing experience right here. Look at that. Does he ever handle this thing? Never no. catches it, kicks it out of midair. And gets a 40-yard punt out of it. And at the other end of it, Derek Alexander made a nice play because I think that ball would have rolled another 15 yards there, and he saved a big play by stopping it. Michigan, 8.33 to play, down by three. Collins in the second half is a 10 out of 13. But he's throwing an interception. Amani Toomer. Over 100 yards receiving, dragged out of bounds by Scott Nelson. The Wisconsin secondary does not match up with these receivers. Michigan's receivers are open all day, and you can understand the confidence that Gary Moeller has in throwing the football. What Wisconsin has to do is put pressure on Collins. That's their only chance to stop the passing game. You can see Tumor Messenger just can't afford to cover too closely. Goes up with one hand, has got a cast on his right hand, makes the catch again. Six for 112 for Tumor today. First down, Michigan. From its own 40, Collins throws it out. Smith again. And Kenny Gales brings Smith down as he crossed the 45 to the 46-yard line. Hey, he had to throw to Walter Smith that time because Amani Toomer was downfield blocking. He thought it was a run. You've heard us say Toomer's name today six times. You've heard us say Mercury Hayes, Walter Smith, Derek Alexander, who has a touchdown. I mean, that's how deep Michigan is at receiver. Top of your screen, watch Amani Toomer. He's ready. He says, wow, I got this guy blocked easy. This is too easy. This is too easy. Hey, Hunter Walter Smith with the ball. Second down four. In the round coming, Derek Alexander. Blocker in front. Cut back to the 42-yard line. Scott Nelson with a pretty nice open field tackle, or Derek Alexander may have been off to the races. Yesterday, Dan McCarney, defensive coordinator for Wisconsin, told us that on every play, we have a, a backside man ready for the reverse against Derek Alexander. This time, great execution by the Michigan offense, calling every play in the playbook right now. Jurowitz would have been the guy with the backside containment, the outside linebacker, but quite frankly, you're not going to find enough guys to stay with a guy that's as fast. He might be there. He's, he's going to blow by him. Exactly. First down, Michigan, the Wisconsin 41. Field goal ties, touchdown may win it. They've got 7.20 left to play. Davis on a draw, he's got a big hole. And he's to the 30-yard line, first down Wolverines. And suddenly there is stunned silence from 78,000 at Camp Randall Stadium. They really haven't backed up. Number 69, John Runyon this time, takes Thompson inside. Number 66 and just clears the hole out of the way. 
Runyon, who Gary Moeller said might be the best offensive tackle we've ever had. And when you got guys like Jumbo Elliott and others, that's some pretty tall cotton you're standing in. Look at Michigan's dominance, much like Wisconsin's was in the first two quarters. Davis again cuts back. He's to the 21 yard line. Eight or nine more for Davis. Reggie Holt made the tackle. There's no doubt in my mind that the Wisconsin defense is not used to playing this many plays. They are tired. They're sucking wind out there. Michigan seems to be getting stronger as the game goes on, and it, it has been the running game that has got them back in this football game. Second and a yard. Down to 6.15 to play. 13-10, Wisconsin. Blitz coming on Collins. And it pays off. It was a great job that time by Todd Collins just holding on to the football in that situation because Mike Thompson, number 66, hits him right in the back. This situation, second is short. You look for the big play, but if you don't get it, you have to get rid of the ball. You said Burgess, number 98, is the guy who labeled him right in the back. He wanted to go deep to Alexander, but good coverage by the Wisconsin secondary. Not enough time. You'll need some time on third and eight. Here they come again. Collins fires incomplete. Intended for Tumor. It's kind of hard to believe, but was because Wisconsin can't cover Michigan's receivers, they're forced to blitz and go into man-to-man -man coverage. They can't lock up and give Collins time to throw, so they have to throw Collins off balance with the blitz. Kind of opposite of what you usually think in that situation. Two down territory for Michigan. Too far away for a field goal. Maybe don't want one anyway. Fourth down and eight. An official timeout. Barry Alvarez looks on. What will be bowl game wise for both teams may hinge on this play. And they're going to come right at him. It's going to be a blitz. There's no mistaking what's going to happen. This could be the ball game. Fourth and eight. Collins got away from the blitz and delivers over the middle, but not enough for the first down. The Badgers take over, and the inmates are set to take over Camp Randall Stadium. Unverzat with a hit. Still 5-14 to play, though. Well, we all thought it was going to be a blitz-type thing, but Cascad number 51, is the guy that comes in, puts the pressure on Collins, and then when you're that far away and you throw a 20-yard pass, you're 15 yards in the backfield. You think you got a first down, but great tackle that time. Coming up, pushing him backwards, and save the first down. The Badgers take over. 5-14 to play. And they work from their own 22-yard line. They need three first downs to win the game. Remember, Michigan only has one timeout left. Fletcher. Bounces out to the 28. Give them about six. And the clock will wind its way under five minutes. Great run by Fletcher, but I'm really shocked that Brent Moss isn't in the football game right now. They're going to play power football, and they just want first downs. Fletcher out, Moss in. Hey, Barry is wired to us up here. <laughs> he even got us an extra time out there in the first half. Let me talk to him right now. Barry, one off to <laughs> Second down, four. First down to the 35. Shante Peoples the tackle. There's one of the first downs. Michigan needs a stop right now. They need a three and out from here. They will crowd everybody up. Shante Peoples will come up as the eighth guy up there in their front look. 
and they must defeat that offensive line right now. The guys up front have to defeat their man just one on one. Hasn't been a hundred yard day yet for Brent Moss, but it sure is getting close. One more carry might do it. I think it will. That'll put him exactly at 100. Buster Stanley with a hit. So seven straight games for Brent Moss of 100 or better this year. And that is a Wisconsin record. Right now, quarterback Daryl Bevel has to tell everyone up front, don't hold, don't make mistakes. And don't drop the ball. And don't fumble the ball, Brent. If we have to take and punt the ball in this situation, we have to do it, but we can't make a critical mistake in this situation. Michigan, the other side, the first guy in has to go for the, get the tackle, and the next two or three guys have to go in and rake the football. Second down eight, Montgomery, the fullback, the lone setback now. He gets the call. And Montgomery fights to the 40. Where it'll be a third down and six. Shante Peoples and Ty Law combined on the hit. We're down to three minutes. And Wisconsin by three. Wisconsin here will probably run the clock all the way down. They haven't even started it yet. They're going to get it to 25 second clock now. Run it right to the end. Get as much time as they can out of the clock here. Should be about two minutes left if they have to punt it. Third down, six to go. Third down conversions have not been the strong suit for the Badgers this half. Bevel got it to Nyquist. They've got a first down. There's the second one. Gary talked about three needed timeouts. They've got two. 2.23 to play. Three needed first downs is what they did. Two big ones right here, and really, they might just need just to watch Bevel fake like he's going to run. Then draws Dyson up, dumps it over to Nyquist for the first down. Great play by Bevel. He acts like he's a 24-year-old guy instead of just a soft. He is. Oh, he is 24. <laughs> <laughs> but his parents are here, so are his in-laws and his wife Tammy, and they've got to be loving that play. Two minutes to go now. Just hold on to the football. Moss back in there. Wisconsin's held the ball for three minutes. Moss cut back. Moss inside of 40. There's that third first down. May have come a little too quickly, though. 150 to play. Moss, a 15-yard gallop. Remember, Michigan only has one timeout. They had to use one with a mistake early, and they used one to have Wisconsin punt against the wind at the end of the first, uh, at the end of the third quarter. The last time Michigan was 4-4, four 1965. Wow. Stays in, single setback, two tight end formation. Moss finds a little opening. He's got about five more. And the Michigan defense gathers no Moss. But Wisconsin's about ready to gather their seventh win of the year and the biggest one in over 30 years. Timeout, 120 left in Madison. One minute, 20 seconds remaining. Camp Randall Stadium sold out. 13-10, Wisconsin. It's ironic right here, Brad. A minute, 20 to go in the game. Second down, this is exactly Michigan had the ball against Illinois when the coaches told us they could have took it a knee, taken a knee and won the game. Point. Eighth play of the drive. Moss. Goes down as he got inside the 25, about a yard and a half short of the first down. It just goes to show you that a play like that is harmless unless you fumble. Exactly. it. Exactly. That's a good point. There's the timeout story. Michigan cannot stop it. And then that really sets up Wisconsin's next game as even a bigger one than this game because Ohio State is going to roll in here a week from now. And each game will get bigger 
each time they win. I'm glad that I'm not trying to guard the field down there. <laughs> I don't think there'll be any guard in the field. Third down. A long yard. Brett Moss. First down, Wisconsin. They'll win it. They have not beaten Michigan since 1981. And then you have to go back to 1962. At the end of that 62 season, the Wisconsin Badgers were in the Rose Bowl. Who knows? History may repeat 31 years later. But this is the biggest win the school's probably had since that 62 year. Credit the Wisconsin football team, but let's salute a little bit Michigan, too, in the second half. They came back and made a big game out of this. Bevel takes an E. Our Kelly Springfield players of the game, Amani Toomer from Michigan. Brent Moss with over 100 yards for the seventh straight time. There's Toomer's numbers, but they weren't good enough against Brent Moss and the Wisconsin Badgers, who have won this game. And the crowd and the team enjoying the moment. <laughs> it's Halloween weekend, and I just have a feeling there's going to be a party in Madison tonight. Final score, Wisconsin 13, Michigan 10. Stay tuned for the College Football Scoreboard Show. Coming up next, for Gary Danielson, Charlene Hawks, and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Brad Nessler. So long from Madison, Wisconsin.